I've been too nice to people. Oh my God, I'm sick of it. I'm so fair, sick of it. That sounds more like Bunnan, to be fair. I'm yeah, so fucking right. sick of it. Who? This is the Joe complex. You okay, hun? Sometimes just, just wake up and choose violence. Just that's, that's why I did my Wale list. Yeah, let's not fucking be nice. Let's not be the bigger person. I don't want peace. I don't want peace. I want chaos. I want problems. Problems. Yeah, problems. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. This be a great intro. I don't even like you, man. I don't like any of you. I see you on Sunday, though. Fuck it. This could end. Terribly. <laughs> Episode 28. Jeez. Damn. Ain't it great? <laughs> Is that your bars? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony the Tiger, shout out Frosties gang. Frosties all day. Uh, you want outside if you never had Frosties? <laughs> Why would you, you eat Frosties outside? Why not? Exactly. Did you used to do the layering? I used to do like, uh, did you do this as well? Where we did the layering of the Rice Krispies with the Frosties on top. You have, nah, yeah, I remember you did that. Yeah. No. Never you're a, I never like Rice Krispies. You're a multi-cereal household. Are you kidding me? That's mad chat. You just had one box of cereals in your house? It was either that or porridge, yeah. You had porridge? In fact, I were rarely allowed Frosties. That's far too much sugar. Say what? Yeah, no, mum mum had a full ban on uh, on sugary products in the gaff. It's child abuse, isn't it? That's craziness. I mean, you, it's not hard to imagine. I was a hyper enough kid. I didn't need additional sugar, especially not in the morning. That's so not even like honey in your porridge? No, no. No like, sugar at it all? Was, it was like Weetabix. And when I went to my nan's house, I put sugar on the Weetabix. That was like a treat because mum wasn't around. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, You've yeah. come a long way. Yeah, yeah. And now I buy my own Diet Coke. What's up? Yeah, any given time in the Abbey household, there was Rice Krispies, Frosties, cornflakes, cocoa pops for my sister, and then whatever else. Jesus. Mm. Mm. And then sometimes when you go to the store and they didn't have Frosties, my mom would try sneaking like, uh, what was the one that looked like Frosties, but wasn't quite. And it was like a, it was like a cornflake and it had like little specks of like something on the it. The bandol It wasn't bran flakes, it was something else. <laughs> oh. It wasn't yeah. fruit and fiber, was it? No, nah, it wasn't fruit and fiber, it was something else. We had else. that, we did have that. I remember it, that's quite I remember it, but anyway. I was a layer of cereal. Milk or cereal first? Cereal. Of course it's cereal Thank first. Thank God, because there, oh, okay. there are some people who do, who do milk first, and it's concerning. How do you make your teas? Order. Uh, tea bag first. Yes. Then hot water. Yes. Then you have to squeeze the tea bag on the way out. Okay. You have to squeeze the tea bag on the way out. Right. Absolutely. And then the milk goes in after the tea bag. What if it's not out. got a string? What do you do with the spoon? You just kind of... Jab at it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You sacrifice a drop. Squeeze and then the milk after the bag's out. So technically speaking, mm. so they say, so the experts say, mm -hmm. you're actually supposed to put the water in first. Yeah. And then you're supposed to put the tea bag in. Because if you put the hot water directly on the tea bag, you're burning the tea. And you're not getting its full essence. Oh. This could end terribly. No one better. Tea connoisseurs. Exactly. <laughs> it's the range, baby. Without further ado. Hello to the listeners. I have to say... Apologies on behalf of this kid and terribly. It's been a crazy week. More on that later. Um, but we had to take a week off and we have a very special guest yes. with us today. Yes. Tommy is not here today. Salute to man like Tommy. Mm -hmm. He will be back soon. ASAP. Um, but we have man like Johnny Vivas mm -hmm. and a very special guest. Mm. You may know him as one third of hip hop music podcast, Rhymes Like Dimes. Jeez. I know him as Lil Bro. Jeez. He's known to them, man, as Yemi Abiade. Jeez. Yemi Abiade. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you guys. Welcome. Of Rhymes Like Dance podcast of the Abiade household mm -hmm. and all those other accolades. And he does so much more. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Um, but yeah, before I do that, thank you to all the listeners who continually tune in across all of the streaming platforms. We are still on YouTube, if you're nasty. Mm. SoundCloud. Amazon Prime. Is that the one? Amazon music. Amazon music. I always get that wrong. Apple Podcasts and Spotify, mm -hmm. who give somewhat the better analytics out of most of these platforms. Thank you. Soon to come on more streaming platforms, but more on that later. Oh, are we? Johnny, how are you very quickly? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm a, I've become a crypto uh, crypto investor over cool. the last couple of weeks. We'll get back to that because mm -hmm. you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Yemi, welcome to the podcast. This is weird. Is this your first podcast other than your own? Uh... Surely no, not. actually. Yeah. I've actually been on a couple. Oh, um, shit. Okay, well. But this is my first with you guys. So happy yeah. to be here, man. Hey! Very happy to be here. You know what I mean? Obviously, long-time listener. You know what I mean? Long-time first-time caller. You're not just 
a podcaster. And by the way, by the way, before we get onto that, do you reckon like, do you reckon mum ever sits at home and just, just like, I'm so proud. My sons didn't take like the uh, traditional African route of being a lawyer or a doctor. They didn't even take the more modern day route of being like into computer science. Mm. No, I've got two sons who are, uh, who are podcasters. How do you think she feels? Well, she asked me how both of our podcasts are doing today. Love and it. I feel like it's always a bit like, okay, I'm going to ask you just because I want to know how you're doing, but <laughs> I'm not sure if I really understand. I get that tone in her voice all yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. but generally I feel like, yeah, man. Big up Mumsy, man. She's been supporting all the shit. Shout yeah, out she proud, auntie. man. Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. Out auntie. I bet, I bet, I, my bet though is that, and having known this from auntie when Victor shout out won his award, this, like neither of your podcasts mean shit until you win a MOBO. Yeah, facts. Then she'll be proud. Or it brings facts. her money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, then she can really shout about it at church. Tell everyone. Um, but yeah, you are not just a podcaster. You're not just my younger bro. You do bits. And you're the most industry dude I know. That's um, what's up. That's tell what's the people true. why. Tell that's the people why. Up. What else you do? First of all, that's not true. It is. But, you it's know, true. It's whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm a writer, um, journalist, um, a curator. Yeah. Um, obviously a podcaster. Um a poor black man from Southeast London trying hey, to make it in this, gunshot, in, gunshot. In, in, in this dunya um, when they said that we weren't going to get out of this hood mentality. CNN said we'd be dead by 21. 100%. We're trying to make it out. You know what I mean? Hey. But um, yeah, man. Man of many talents, I guess. Um, primarily um, writing. I started writing in ooh, 2012 when I was in uni. Started mm-hmm. off doing sports writing. Um, and then when I graduated, I did a bag of internships at like the Guardian and mm. other like sports uh, websites and stuff. Liverpool uh, FC. Liverpool FC. Yes, yes. My, my club, my club. Hey. I, did, I did a bit of writing for them as well. Um, Daily Mail, you know what I mean? Um, Jesus. Yeah. What do they have you writing? Um, sports articles. Oh yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah, So it was in conjunction with this uh, website called 90 Men that I used to write for. They had me writing oh, yeah. for the Liverpool site. Hey. And they got me hooked up with the Daily Mail as well. Um, Were they like, look, we've hired a black guy. We don't hate all of No, no, this was pre-diversity. He was in there before they started caring about us. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Um, Damn. Yeah, this was around like 2015 <laughs> times. Um, so Were you like, I was, I was born here. <laughs> so please hire me. I did have to fill in a form just to be did like, you? yo, I, I do... I am from here. I am from here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I show mm. proof. Nice. But um, nice yeah, man. Stuff. And then I kind of pivoted to music writing um, and I kind of rose up the ranks. Um, I wrote for an, a blog called Viper for a while and then I moved to become the editor of a magazine called Dummy. Mm-hmm. And then from that, I was headhunted by a record label called XL Recordings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Just, um, just that little record label, just XL just Recordings, home one. of Kano, Adele and the rest. You might have heard of him. You <laughs> might have heard of him. Dizzy too. How could I forget? <laughs> you might have heard of him. Might have heard of him. Might have heard of him. The Prodigy as well. Like small, 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 oh, small fucking artist. Artist. Shout out Richard Indian Russell. Sense. Shout out Richard Creators. Russell. One of my Shout heroes. Richard Russell. I think I've got him on my phone still. Like Say what? Contact. Can I text him? Uh, yeah, you probably could if you Let's want. Let's do it later. Let's do it later. Don't let, yeah, him. Yeah. Don't let him text him. Why not? He'll fangirl it. It will just ruin. He's going. Here's my demo. I got a demo. <laughs> yeah, he's only a millionaire on my phone. I'm quite proud of that. To be wow, honest. nice. But yeah, uh, I yeah, I did social media with them for a year, and then I moved on to a role with a new startup music tech company called Kiki. Shout out. As a hip hop curator. So Mm -hmm. I'm basically in charge of acquiring um, DJ mixes, radio shows and podcasts for the hip hop section of the platform. Um, And I do a bit of writing for them on the side as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, man, that's pretty much me. Um, Nice, man. Succinct. We feel like we know you. Welcome to the pod. This could end terribly. Mumsy, I know you're proud. Okay. I know you're proud. We'll get you on one day, by the way, Mumsy. We've got something special for you. Yes, please. Johnny, hello. You are now officially yep. a cryptocrypt. <coughs> oh, Oy. very good to be fair. Very good. Very good. Good. I was on the spot back. as well. I'm telling you, Richard Russell's gonna get my demo. Yes. Very good. Done now. <laughs> very good. You never lose it. You never lose it. Yeah, very good. Very good. Bars. Uh, am I a cryptocrypt? Yeah, probably I am. Well, I mean, to an extent. I mean, I still think it's all bullshit. I still think it's all bullshit. But that shouldn't be a reason to to make money off of the bullshit. Right. Fair. Uh, this is like this is like people in like in the 1800s who are like, why is everyone fucking buying tulips? They die after seven days. There's no point going against the tide. Like you might as well swim with it. Buy the fucking tulips. The price goes up, and you just got to sell out before the bubble bursts. So that's what I've been doing. I've been buying hype. What have you been investing in? Warning, warning. This is not investment advice. It's fully not investment advice. Uh, so I bought some proper dog shit coins, uh, and like the the word dog is quite operative. So I bought one called Mononoke Inu proper dog shit another catchy. one called saitama inu proper dog shit catchy following the whole shiba inu thing right mm. those two tanked 
haven't made any money off those. Shiba, them they're the dogs, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're very yeah. cute dogs. Yeah, yeah. Very cute types dogs. that eat. Very thing. dangerous, apparently. Oh, yeah? Are they? Yeah, very well, they're aggressive. aggressive. Once they get bigger. Oh Jesus. I didn't know they got your face bigger. Off oh snap. With, with the quickness. Wow. Ninja just because. Dogs. Even if even if you're the owner. Just because. Huh. Fuck you, that's why. Uh and then I bought Floki Inu, which is the one you've seen bear marketing of, maybe. Nah. Like the bear adverts. Tyson Fury's been up with his little Viking helmet on Instagram doing doing the most. Yeah. So those three are kind of doing alright. And then I had one that went to the moon called Dogs of Elon. Okay. It's like an NFT platform, bought that pre-sale that mooned nicely. That sounds like a Reddit thread. It yeah. really does. But I mean, so was Shiba two years ago or a year and a cool. half ago. Cool. So anyway, uh Have you yeah. made monies? Have I made monies? Are you allowed to say, oh, no, you got people listening who are going to be asking you for a fiver in it. Johnny, have you made money? Do people want to know? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Man, man said 20 X or something. He said 20 X and three pods. He said 15X. Yeah, 20X. Yeah, he said 15 X. Yeah, yeah. It was 15 at one point. It was that's 15. a lot of Xs. It's a lot of Xs. It's a lot of Xs. Lot of Xs. Um, but it's not 15 X anymore. But yeah, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'll pick some decent guys. <laughs> Good shit, man. Better, better than my day jobs, going. That's for that's for damn sure. <laughs> we love to see it. And shout out all the people again. Going back to the listeners, shout out all the people who were giving us heat for not dropping a an episode this week or last week when you'll be listening to this. Yes. Um, honestly, it's moments like that that make us really, really proud. We appreciate to be you. to be giving you this 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 source every other week. Mm-hmm. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to make up for the gap and you're going to have back-to-back weeks of releases mm. um, by God's grace. Hopefully nothing else uh, gets in the way of us providing you with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the meantime, I think it's important that we do a quick little recap of what's been going on in whoa, the world. Whoa, 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 oh, shit, whoa, 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 whoa. How are you, Rich? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I am... I, I yeah, am. Yeah. I'm okay. Most so people do, don't worry. today, it's been a mad week. And as I said, we'll get back to this for content purposes in the future, we will reflect on this particular week. But today in particular has been pretty shit, man. I lost my fucking wallet. I walked literally 10 minutes away from my yard, came back. I've lost my wallet. It was a brand new wallet. had all my shit. Before you, man, came, I was renewing and cancelling cards. <laughs> Turned out we were in a foul mood. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. And then I was uh, like... Couldn't and, happen to a nicer guy. And then like... And then I got news that one of my brothers has COVID as well. So shout out Pete. But like, you know, shout he's going to be all right. Um... And then after that, like I went onto my Instagram and I found out one of my uni fr- one of my uni friends rather has died. So yeah, it was it's been a tough tough afternoon. Uh, it's been a rough week, but it put my little moans about me losing my wallet and having to renew cards and the stresses around that and put that into perspective real quick. Um, Eunice, who I'm going to dedicate the episode to, was 33 years old. Um, details are quite thin as to how she passed away. Um, but the heartbreaking part about it is that she only just said goodbye to her mum less than four months ago as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so sending love to the Abula family mm-hmm. because honestly, I don't even know. I, words can't really, really, really do anything at times like this she was 33 and she was an absolute sweetheart we went to uni together uh, tommy will know her as well she moved out to new york which was one of her dreams a few years ago and has just been living the life um and life isn't fair so shout out to her i'm mm-hmm. um, sorry right. to bring the mood down but you know that's what's happened in the last couple of hours before you man came around and it's a bit shit but we have to unfortunately move love and light to her family man mm-hmm. swear down um Peace. So now we have to segue to to bullshit stuff like, you know, like when all these global leaders got together in Glasgow last week to talk about the environment, a little little gathering called COP26. Oh, or, or or OP26. OP26. Why is it OP26? Because it's just full of OPs. Okay. You know, who pretend that they like each other for the environment. Is Boris an OP? Have we changed the pod's position? Hmm? I thought the pod's position was that he was a serial gallist. He is a gallus, but he's an op as well, isn't it? Oh, okay, I wasn't. Well, I, Tommy's quite pro Boris, so. Oh yeah, he's sure. white boy summer for you. I get it. You're back in the. You're back in gang. <laughs> Uncle, what, Uncle Boris? Yeah. I can't let you slander him. Uncle Boris. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, COP twenty six is probably the main big thing that we weren't able to really talk about while we were away. It is a gathering of all of the world's major leaders. leaders. Um, and they get together to discuss all the ways in which they are going to protect the environments. The environment? Protect the environment. <laughs> the environment. <laughs> the environment. <laughs> and the environment too. Why not? <laughs> and the environment. Um, in short, India promised to get their net zero down by 2017, which was 20 years too late. Russia and China were like, nah, bro. No, we're not even coming. Fuck you. Long for that. Hold that. Long. Bit of a myth still? We're busy. 
long. And then there were all these little promises like ending deforestation across the board by 2030, cutting methane levels by 2030. Methane is like cow farts, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what Cowspiracy is about. They actually yeah. haven't really done much on that because that's kind of the whole point of the film Cowspiracy, how global farming industry is like the major, major pollutant nobody speaks about. They probably not address that. But methane is farts, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's in farts. Basically, yeah. yeah. Greenhouse gas and that. So it's like something that's very, very natural is just fucking us all over. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Stop farting. Yeah, how'd you do that? Like, what'd you, what'd you do? You kill the cows? That's stop, the only way to stop them from fighting. Stop eating beans, you fascist. Is that really a problem? What, eating beans? No. The cows just- Cows farting. Cows are like herbivores, right? They eat just grass and stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it, I think it's I think it's all the processed food that they're given makes them like fart and shit more, which is the problem. And like, because you've got, you have so many cows that you don't actually need. You're only breeding to murder for meat. And it's that unethical production and consumption of cow meat that is producing an unnecessary amount of methane. Right. Uh, so stop well, I that. mean, yeah, I mean, go cows, beyond, go if you hear meat. Yeah, like, if you're listening, like cows. Dave Chappelle said, go beyond pussy, go beyond meat. True, true. Um, and then obviously the, the, the bigger part of this whole COP26 discussion isn't necessarily about what the big countries are doing it's about the effect that these bigger countries are having on the smaller yes. countries delegates from smaller nations have expressed or did express their disappointment with the actions or rather lack of actions yes. by the world's richest nations an example being mia motley the prime yes. minister of barbados which is an island that is already deeply threatened by rising sea levels. The boss, what uh, star this woman is. Mia warned that the climate crisis facing her country is perilous. She said it is a code red to China, to the US, to Europe, and to India. Meanwhile, Greta Thunberg was outside of Glasgow on these streets just screaming, stick your conference, stick your conference, stick your conference up your ass, stick your conference up your ass. I don't, really, I don't really get her deal, to be honest. Oh, here we go. I never do either, to be It's honest. kind of strange, like... Why oh, my I'm... God. Is this a Greta Thunberg hatred podcast? Yeah. What? No, yeah. you know what it is? She's been there, but I... she's one of them men that... Well, those girls that... Kind of <laughs> she's one of them Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the street in me just popped yeah, yeah. out. But yeah, she's just, one of those pe- she's just one of those people that are there, but I never really notice. Yeah. Like, she just, she's just there. Like, not complaining, but she's protesting a lot, but... Kind of goes in one ear and goes out the other. She's become more of a for me. She's 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 become more of a symbol, right? Than an actual activist, right? If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. She shows up and she speaks and she speaks well, but I think the purpose that she serves in this overall conversation about environment is basically to just bring awareness to people, sort of her age and upwards, so that so that we don't fall into this massive, massive trap by the time that the younger kids get older of living in a, in, in a perilous situation from an environmental perspective. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. I'm just not entirely sure. I don't know. She's just kind of always complaining about shit. You know, when you're complaining about people who just complain and don't provide solutions. It, yeah. I, I, e, I know a couple. Me. I, I, yeah. I, e, me. Big I, e, you. She is, yeah. I mean, she's basically the, she is to environmental uh, campaigning what I am to podcasting. In well, you want to bitch and moan and actually provide very little value. What well, you want G. Thunberg to do though? I she's what, she's 16? Provide some policy solutions. I mean, really? I, yeah. I mean, to your point about her being a symbol, I could respect that if she is. Um, but to Johnny's point as well, it does seem like she complains a lot with no real like action. And not only she's only 16, yeah. like, she's not going to have all the answers. I will say she's got quite a decent chat though, because there was that woman who got her name wrong on Mastermind and said that her name was Sharon. And then she changed her name on Twitter to Sharon. Yeah, I saw that. That was quite a good Twitter chat. I saw that. Greta, Sharon. Yeah, yeah that's not Sharon even close. For a that's minute. a par. Yeah, yeah. That's a par. It's bad it's enough not, when you- It's not even close. It's one yeah. not great it's, name for another not great yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad enough when you don't like n- remember like Nigerian names or how to pronounce them. Greta and Sharon aren't even close, buddy. No. No, 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 no. And they're both also quite like, I don't know, westernized names. Not like you can- you can justify not being able to pronounce them. She's, so are you, she's straight fucked it. Are you happy with, with how COP26 went? Do you... I, honestly, it, it's kind of been like the T20 World Cup. Like, who gives a shit? No one's been following it at all. Do you not care about the environment, Juan? No, I hate the environment. I hate the environment. Oh. I'm anti-environment. No, it's just like, well, we all knew what was necessary before this year. We, I was actually in Paris for COP24 in 2015, 2016, Ooh. when they all promised that they were going to do lots of stuff. And then... Um, That's very industry, by the way. Sorry? <laughs> That's very industry. That is very industry. Very industry. Yeah, I actually was at 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 the time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all it's all largely patter. I mean, 
how do you convince these countries to actually stick to any of these agreements? What is the incentive? And like, I think we enter these discussions from a perspective of bigger countries who've fucked smaller countries to an unequal level of economic development um, without recognizing the fact that they are so far behind other countries due to things like exploitative capitalism and the history of imperialism and globalism. And the reason that India needs to produce so much more greenhouse gases is because they were systematically fucked by the West for Britain by, for 100 plus years. And it's actually unfair to them to try and fuck their economy without actually compensating them. So if the top if the discussion around environmentalism was to do with redressing the imbalances that uh, capitalist imperialism caused, then that maybe we'd all have a bit more sympathy for making India cut their greenhouse gases. But it's actually pretty fucked just to tell them to give up a section of their economy and impoverish their people. But what about uh, China who just like continually like keep opening up these what is it coal mines so and shit. so some of the largest inve- uh, fuck me i do not want to be like the guy who defends the ccp but Too like late. some of the largest investments in green and renewable technology in the world are by china no country invests more in green and renewable technology than china yeah. um fine they're a bit guilty of the whole well if they're, if they're, they're kind of one of the first to out uh, to ban bitcoin mining they've closed down um, net coal usage uh, and coal plants investments in coal plants etc etc so they're making large strides towards it but again um you know why why was their economy kind of so far behind for many many years it's because they were subject to part of a similar um economic battle against capitalism since the 40s and 50s that has led their Mm. economic focus to be on production to catch up as opposed to america's which was kind of further ahead at the the time yeah there's a a whole long story yeah Uh, but china is not just fuck china like fuck america's like now moving back to shale extraction so we're pretending like that's not bad for the environment yeah um yeah i don't know it's just a lot of waffle it's a lot of waffle and you just kind of hope that these countries actually stick to it i'm a skeptic and how do you feel about the 400 planes that made their way into Glasgow this from all the of point. these And uh, actually I talked shit about Greta countries. earlier, but fair play to her, that time that she went to New York for a climate summit, she sailed across the ocean together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, all right, so put your money where your mouth is, right? Yeah, so they're saying that the 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 400 planes will generate more CO2 emissions than 1,000 Scots burn in one year. Yeah. You know what that's called? What? Fly irony. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, let me do my sprite. No, click. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't know. It's just mad chat. Like Rishi Sunak hosts, we host this conference and then Sunak cuts the um, cuts the duty on domestic flights. Yeah. Like all of this like grandstanding is just to kind of, it just feels like a way to shit on smaller countries without actually addressing the problems at home. There are things that big countries can do to sort their own houses before forcing other countries to, to sort theirs out. Yeah. Um, and it feels like this whole <laughs> topic, conversation is often approached from the wrong angle. Cool. How does one segue from COP26 to the baby? Both are fundamentally topics on reducing the amount of gas that comes out of <laughs> people's holes. Sweet <laughs> connection. <laughs> That's a fucking slam dunk. Sweet connection. I gotta give Johnny that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, this also happened while we were away and we could not not discuss this, especially with music aficionado, hip hop aficionado in the house, Yemi Abiyade. Oh, I thought you were going to say me. No. I love it. Um, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, I think it was a few, a good few episodes ago now, we discussed the cancelling of the baby. It's a bit of a mad one. Because of his very inflammatory comments during one of his performances mm. uh, towards the LGBTQ plus community. Mm-hmm. Now, we didn't really follow the story thereafter, but what happened after was he essentially had his whole summer cancelled, gigs-wise. He was probably slated to do about 20 festivals and performances um, in what is the peak season for performing artists, especially post-pandemic. Nearly every single festival organisation cancelled him, and he found himself in a very precarious situation where he went from being the Grammy-nominated, one of the biggest artists out, to ultimately being blacklisted and blackballed. What we weren't expecting then was a very strange, and honestly, one of my favorite articles, one of my favorite stories of the year. Um, The baby has apparently been given a green light to commence with earning money as a recording artist by the CEO 
of an LGBTQ plus community. Nice. For real. He's been uncancelled. He's been uncancelled. He's been uncancelled. He's like the one guy who like j- escaped the friend zone and like, yeah. marries the girl. So the baby's this time it's with the gays. ignorance has earned him acceptance of the LGBTQ, but the community is content on giving comedian Dave Chappelle the boot. Ah. In the months since the baby spewed hateful homophobic tirades right. um, during his Miami Rolling Loud festival, as I mentioned... Relationship Unleashed, which is this LGBT community or organization, rather, the CEO, Gwendolyn D. Clemens, explained that he has learned a lot over the past few months, Mm -hmm. did not understand what he was saying. Right. Right. Mm. But in short, we give him the blessing to get back out there and do what he does best. It's very generous Mm. of them. It's very generous of them. It's very kind. And then he performed at Rolling Loud New York as well. Yeah. Didn't he? And then he went out uh, upon 50 Cent's invitation to perform at Rolling Loud in New York. He's got a new 22 show tour, I've written in my notes, on the Baby. Yeah. It's pretty mad. And he also doubled down on like his stance. Like, at the time? At the time of his yeah. cancellation. Like he was dropping freestyles. Oh, he fully said it. He went on Donda and said like, you guys are trying to take money away from my children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food from my children's mouth and all that. So he doubled down. He wasn't, even though he apologized, he was not apologetic. Yeah, he backed it. So how do we, uh, how do we feel about the, uh, the tap, so to speak, being reopened for old babes? I feel it's, um, <laughs> the babes. Maybe the LGBT. <laughs> Plus Q plus community feel that he's now the grown up. Very good. Mm. Yummy. I'm not even entertaining that. <laughs> oh, you're on it as well. <laughs> yeah. The mature. Where do I go from here? <laughs> uh, the mature. Who are you? Um, listen, man, I think it was inevitable, really. I think while what he said was really bad and egregious and stuff, I think history is kind of showing us, like more recent history anyway, is kind of showing us that even if someone is cancelled, if they're like a very valuable asset just in terms of like the people that they're working with and they're negotiating with and they're just kind of, you know, being in a partnership with, they're going to find an excuse to have him do what he does best in order to line their pockets. Um, Brings up an interesting point. Is he benefiting this particular LGBTQ plus organization by getting back on the road? What is the obvious link between the two? And you've alluded to something which is actually quite interesting because it would appear that in order for them to give him the blessing to get back out, maybe there was a monetary agreement between him and them. There had to have been. Isn't that fucking nuts? Yes. It seems as if that that um, company has unwillingly well, sold out the community, in a sense. But is it selling out? Because if they, if, if they can get a check off the baby, then they can make some community investments and fund some outreach programs and help with some educational shit in the hood or whatever to stop this happening. You don't, the you don't find anything problematic with him having to pay to show remorse. Um, I mean, ultimately when, when auntie passes the hat around in church. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> Go. What are you putting a fiver in for? The church. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not giving a tenor in tithes or whatever well, you at are. church for for my sins. Well, you kind of are. I'm not. I mean, that's kind of, that's the origin of it. No, it's offerings. It, I mean, maybe I've got this this completely wrong, but I know that my money is going towards the staff of the church. I know that the priests and the staff at the church aren't, right. aren't very well paid. So, so And maintaining the, the church as well. Maintaining sure. the church. It goes like, you know, we contributed to my mum's church recently like because funding, they need a whole overhaul. Um, funding like the structure and the Yeah, but it's not, I, I'm not and, saying, yo, I've been out on these streets like banging everybody, like like killing people. And I'm, I'm like, I'll give a tenner on Sunday and yeah, everything's blessed. are committing sins during yeah, the week. Yeah, okay, and okay. on Sunday but, you'll pay 10 pounds. No, no, no. But that's got... not for, well. Depending on who you are. So this is it. It's not the baby is just paying the church of the gays. That's what he's doing. He's putting his ten pound in the gay hat, and he's now allowed to sing again. But the gay organization or the LGBTQ plus organization are not a church. They're just an organization. They're independent. And is, furthermore, is, there is no one unifying organization that speaks for all of this community. So who are these guys? So who's this? Yeah, I mean, 
there are different denominations of Christianity as well, yeah. Right. Oh, different denominations of, of different of different religions. The, he he's he's just he's paying his penance to the first people that tell him who tell him that he's kosher. That's it. And it, in terms, and in he terms just of, needed someone to to whitelist him again. Yeah, and in terms of optics, it looks good because yeah. you've made peace, I suppose, with right. a company that represents that community. Right. So you could go off and say, well, look, I've kind of like. Not repented, but I've I've grown. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've developed. I'm I'm this new, you know, you, you guy. Got, you, guys to, you guys trying to wind me up? So you know, you know, back in the day when <laughs> you, you guys used... trying to wind me up? No, no but honestly, you, honestly, you optics remember, wise, though. No, 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 no. You guys trying to wind me up? Do you remember a few episodes ago when we were like, remember how in the early two thousands every UK like music group had like one black guy in the lineup for diversity, right? Yeah. Did shout out, be... shout out, Rocky from Blazing Squad. Shout out. Man, Ma- like, what's his name? Simon from Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Who? Marcel. Bradley from S Club. Come, come on. All the, all the boys. Yeah. Um, th- basically, this company is now the baby's token black guy in like his companies that sponsor him, right? You have a roster of companies that like endorse you as an artist. He's now got some gays on side. But on the flip, flip happy, of that, happy days. he can also say that he's got an LGBTQIA plus commun- like aspect on side as well that's, so that's he looks like yeah he looks better he's doing his bit yeah so he's that's doing his bit that's, that's, so that's he's got a token what I mean gay company optics. yeah he's got a token gay company who now says this guy's not a homophobe anymore for the small price for the for a small loan of a million dollars they get to they get they it's get to, they get to right, let's him. Fuck, fuck this shit who does wiley <laughs> have to pay to be uncancelled by the jews uh, johnny who does he have to pay johnny since we're on this bullshit about money equals fucking repentance, yeah. who does Wiley have to pay? He can, pay, he can pay me. Let me know. He can pay Johnny. me. Johnny. He can pay Literally me. Johnny. He can pay me. He can pay me. Literally I'm, Johnny. I'm in, in Bitcoin. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm in Bo. I'm in Bo. He true, can, he true. Can, it'd, be, he, it'd be quick. He can, find, he can I'm walk here. here. I'm here. He can pay me. He can pay me. Easy. Yeah. I can't believe you guys don't think this is utterly bonkers. No, it is. It is. Like, it 100% it's obviously is. Fucked. But obviously it's you know what it is? Grow up, bro. How do you think this shit works? I'm seeing the reason. But it's ridiculous. Grow up. I'm seeing the reason. Why does he keep it? saying that? I'm gonna punch him in the face <laughs> one day. I swear to God. He said that. To, he even said that to me. He sent. I, he sent me a text saying he's coming around to the yard. I was like, Yo, by the way, my mood's a bit off. I've had an awful afternoon. He said, Grow up. <laughs> After everything I told you, I've been through this afternoon. This motherfucker said, Grow. I, I literally. I might didn't know that at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why you shouldn't. That's why you shouldn't lead with him, now motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should ask me what's wrong instead of saying, Grow up, motherfucker. That sofa chair will get flipped Jesus real quick. Christ. <laughs> Fuck, who needs enemies? I'm um, yeah. No, it's, it's 100% bonkers. I feel like that company, uh, I mean, first of all, like you clearly don't move in the interest of that community. You're literally seeing dollar signs when you look at the baby. You're seeing a big floating dollar sign and you're thinking, cool, let me cash out on this guy. And we move. Mental. It seems that way anyway. They might do some good. Maybe. They might do some good. Maybe, but I feel like he clearly hasn't changed his views and they clearly are chasing whatever they're chasing. Yeah. At no point are they compatible yeah. because you're going against someone who clearly doesn't have much regard for the people that you represent. So why go into that anyway? Listen, Wiley gives me a million pounds. I go to, I, I go to Stanford Hill. I, I build, I build a shul. I buy some Sidor. I finance some Saturday classes for the kids. Is Wiley an anti-Semite or is he a mensch? Is he a friend of Israel? It's a gray area, right? <laughs> this is, it's business. It's business. No, listen, it, it 100% is business. But does that mean that it's right? It's an, I think it's a naive question. It's a naive Why? question. Because, okay, so what's the alternative? The, the thing is about you, forever? no, Johnny, the thing is you're not, you're, you're being a bit too, you're hyper-rationalizing this whole thing. We want to talk about how nuts this is and what this, what the wider ramifications of this is that an independent organization yeah. can ultimately hold the keys yeah. to a otherwise successful man's so, career based on one fucking mistake. So and it has great. to be an ongoing in, perpetu- in perpetuity agreement, potentially. Yeah. So, so he's, is... he chops up he, he chops up his cat his paychecks at the end of every quarter that he gets through the mail yeah. and it's like this goes to my daughter's college fund yeah. this goes to my son's car this bit goes to 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 this organization yeah crazy yeah. So this, is, of, yeah, this is wild. great this is great right so remember in like episode one or two we discussed um, your man who did the uh, 12, 12 years of slave oh, yeah. workout oh, right yeah. we'll <laughs> and we had and we had a chat about like should people just be out of their bag forever mm. so the baby is pioneering he's a pioneer because what he's basically establishing is the market for uncancelling yourself, right? And so from now on, rich people can set a budget for racism. 
You can set a budget for homophobia. You can set a budget for like it's fine. You can say some shit about the gays. It's going to cost you six months and ten million bucks. But you can say some shit on stage. And really, in that sense, he's a he's a thought leader. This is capitalism's we final need to frontier. Move on. You're calling him a thought leader. Yeah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. Okay, Johnny, cool. Johnny's my question is bugging. <laughs> He's bugging. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> Thought leader. I'm getting Pioneer. fucked up. <laughs> My team. But to that point, was he ever really cancelled? Yes. He was cancelled. <laughs> unlike unlike, unlike Chappelle. I don't and this, know, man. And this is, this is the bigger, this is the wider discussion. You bring up a really good point. This is the wider discussion about why. And there's a few discussions in this. The main one being artists, please, if you've got a bit of clout, fame, whatever. Stay independent. This guy is on top of the world. In terms of like new rappers, he is elite in the new school. He's in that little baby, little Dirk circle, right? But he d- he didn't have enough from streams and this early into his career mm. to be uncancelable. Right. He's not like Dave Chappelle who has had generations of making cash and is untouchable ultimately. Yeah. The bigger message in this is, yo, these new guys, you need to stay independent, man, because you need to, you need to hold the keys to your career. Because as long as there are organizations like this, you can tap your label on the shoulder and be like, nah, he's not performing. Until that power is no longer in, in existence, we are fucked as artists. Yeah, I mean, I would also say, don't go on stage and say mad shit. Of course, of yeah. course, of course, of course. But, business. but, but of course, but I mean, and we're going to get onto statute of limitations with regards to offense and all this other stuff in a bit. To that. But, Yes, he said an offence. Then what? Cancelled yeah. forever? Well, this is it. He's established the price of not being cancelled anymore. Fair, fair. All right, cool. But that. why I don't think he wasn't necessarily cancelled is, it, it just really depends on what you mean by it. Like, yes, he was taken off various festival lineups. He lost endorsements and all that stuff. Were people still listening to him? Yes. Were people still like, you know, up in his streams, putting money in his yeah, pocket, yeah, yeah. what little money streaming gets for you? Yes. So... It really just, for me, it depends on how you look at cancelling. Mm. You can lose all these deals, but if people still fuck with you, they're still going to fuck with you. Especially fans. Fans don't care. Mm. So fans what, really is, don't care. Is R. Kelly cancelled? Like, don't tell hey, me. Hey, 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 hey. Don't tell me yes, white girls is. aren't still bumping Ignition and de- DJs are not still bumping it in the club. I don't know a DJ what? who's playing R. Kelly these days, brother. Boy, I don't know what, what sordid fucking you spots to, you you're still to, frequenting. He's going to clap him But his streams often. did go up. Once when he went to jail. That's right. So, so in been one or, aspect, I mean, he also got to jail. That's quite. But canceled. you know what that was? That was like the last. I probably was a few of them streams. I was like, yo, this is the last time I'll be able to do this. Like, <laughs> let's just have one last just R. R. Kelly quickly, night. Let's slow dance one last time to Robert Kells. <laughs> anyway, should never admit it. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I was the only one. Yes. yes. Yeah. What? I've never, been, I've, I've never been a Kells fan like that though. Yeah, you're bugging. I always hated R. Kelly. You man are bugging. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So, good luck to the baby in it. Like, um, He's I, nice, I still like you as an artist. Not, I've never really liked you as a person, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I now want to talk about mm-hmm. women embarrassing their other halves. Oh, <laughs> hey. Hey, what happened? <laughs> No, I'm joking. Go on. You got something to tell us? Yeah, no, at all. Do you want to talk about it? You're right. It's right? a safe space. It yeah. just goes out. To, <laughs> just goes out to hundreds of people. It was a general. Um, it was a general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to talk about Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, Jesus, and I also want to talk about Jeff Bezos and Lauren Sanchez. Which mm. one should we attack first, guys? Mm. I mean, Jeff Bezos <laughs> was on smoke, man. Like. I'd, be, I'd feel the way too. I can't even lie to you. Like the way Lauren, is that her name? Lauren. Was looking up at Leo. She was, yeah. ready, to eat, she was ready to eat that man. Brother. I already feel like girls can't hide it when they're on it. Yeah. That was just crazy. I want to eat you alive. Yeah, crazy. In enough. front yeah. of my man. Crazy yeah. thirst. I, I almost want him to watch whilst I eat you. That was kind of the face she was giving. Yeah. Yeah. It's it like one of those chat. really weird, like cuckold poems. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then really again, weird. like what, like two twos, why would you take your missus to a party that you know Leonardo DiCaprio is going to turn up in a tuxedo? So too? as it turns out, apparently Bezos and DiCaprio are close friends. Oh, they so are, yeah. I don't know if that's the first time that they've all met. That's maybe not the first time he's let Leo fuck his wife. I, yeah, what? I don't know. I couldn't possibly say. I mean, he's a sus geezer, yeah? He's a sus geezer. When he come out of that space capsule and he was doing that interview, that laugh, 
That's the laugh of a man who uh, lets. Can you give us the? I didn't see the laugh. It was like, you... Someone asked him a question and it was like bare basic and he was like, yeah, I'd do it again. <laughs> like that's the laugh of a, of a man who lets other men fuck his wife. Cuckold. But to be fair, uh, if you were going to get cuckolded by anyone. It'd be uh, Leo. Like that's less embarrassing. That's less embarrassing. I think the, I think the narrative. She's a little too old for him though. I mean, I don't know. He's Leo, Leo's not uh, not young he's anymore. Young. Him I know, but he prefers it. like. Yeah, to be fair, Leo women, likes women. nineteen year olds. Yeah. He's oh, a sick. He? He's a sick bastard. Oh, so she's shit. she's probably way too old for him. Yeah, yeah, she's way too old for Leo. She's like Fifty she, something. She That's is, big facts. Yeah. She uh, <laughs> she was she was filling out that dress though. Bro, no, she she literally nearly broke her neck looking up. Bro, she was like like all the teeth in the world. Yeah. What? It was like our Bro, fans. It was like our fans looking. Bare teeth and eyes. Yeah, it's like our fans <laughs> waiting for episode twenty eight. They were like. Ah. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Teeth, eyes, and vibes, bro. Yeah. I swear. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, a sticky one, literally and figuratively. But I um, guess the issue isn't necessarily... Well, it is one of the issues. The issue isn't necessarily how she looked at him. Well, it is kind of, but... Jeff Bezos, man, is, I think, still, if not, it's that sort of rotating three at the top mm. of the wealth list. Richest man in the fucking world. Yeah. And still... Yeah. And still... Yeah. I mean, and he's not like inherited wealth. Like he did that shit with Amazon. Amazon back in the day was like, what book? They were in books yeah, or some shit, book. like yeah, online yeah. books or some shit. OG. Look at that shit now. So he's an, he's an impressive brother. You know what I mean? Like he's not, he's not one of these neeks, like one of these Waltons who, who inherited their money. He might be, but you, you're losing my point. And you still, you still have your wife in front of the whole, whole world. Fiending. For another I mean, pee pee. Jeff Bezos is not a handsome man. Correct. It doesn't matter. Brother, there's no such <laughs> thing as an ugly billionaire. Uh, I think I hear that. But next to Leo, there might well be. Yeah, this is what I was going to say. Basically, what there might whole, well be. What the whole saga proves is you actually, you can't put a price on source. And Leo has lots and Bezos has nothing. How do we know? Why are we speaking on a man's source like that? Barlet and everything, bro. Bar Maybe she likes a bit of hair, you know? So right. he, come out, so he released that picture the next day being like, Leo, I'm coming for you, leaning on a picture. That was problematic, That was by proper, way. like, Hampstead Heath. That was problematic. Cruising. It wasn't Leo's fault, Jeff. Talk to Lauren, buddy. I thought that was some real gangster, gangster stuff, man. Oh, yeah? Gangster Disciples, GD. No, that was like, uh, I don't know, that was... That was yeah. Kind of a bitch move. It's like what he's trying to make, he's trying to be part of the joke and actually he's still very much the joke. It's good to know like these modern day billionaires still use the old school ways of killing people, just push them off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's. I, I certainly wouldn't be taking non-commercial flights if I were Leo for a while. Okay. I, I Like I'd, I'd stay, I'd hide in plain sight yeah. for a little bit. This guy basically funds the CIA. Like if he wants to fucking kill anyone who just... Yeah, we're going to be getting like, take a lot. Amazon Prime deliveries via drone as well. You might just drop that anthrax. Yeah, he, he, he could just, just drop that anthrax on Leo's crib. Drop a fucking yeah, a torpedo one. missile. Yeah, I would not. Up. I would not fuck with him. Why is Lauren doing that? Why is she doing that? Listen, she lost herself, man. When the winds take you, the winds take you. It is Leo happens. still that hot? I don't know. It's like an age thing, right? It's like you grow up with people that you've wanted to fuck <laughs> your entire life. He was right? a beautiful young man, was, to be so, fair. Yeah, right? So like, there are, there are people that you loved when you were younger <laughs> who, and maybe like 21, 21, years old, 21 year olds would be like, who's Halle Berry? And yeah. you'd be like, fuck, right? It's kind of like when I tell people that like, I'm still in love with Michelle Rodriguez from the Fast and the Furious and they're like, huh? Exactly. And I was like, bro, did you see her in Fast and the Furious too? He is, too Fast, Too Furious? Did you see her in that? He, he is, I grew up with that. He's her Michelle. She's had a problematic though. Is she? Who? Yeah, she's, she's said said some things about um the blacks. Oh, I mean that's that's Latinas, isn't it? What? Why are you coming? Uh, Latins, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys, you, appro you guys appropriate. You guys episode. appropriate. But you don't really love us. Come on, man. Appropriate. <laughs> yeah, you do. You know, you're, not, you're not appropriate. Anyway, hey, we're gonna do this way. Every black guy Jada, is calling himself puppy Jada, recently. Jada, I, I would talk about appropriation. Which you black, which it? black brother is calling himself puppy? Almost every black guy. You on call Twitter. you call black man puppy. What that? That's very sus. No, I don't. <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> go back to every single episode of This Could End Terribly from one to at least 17. Johnny calls everyone pappy. I am black. Yeah. So therefore you call black man pappy. Yeah, Do not argue. I de it's not self-identifying as like, sh as uh, no, Drake can get away with it. Calling themselves champagne puppy. Or that's just an Instagram handle. Why can he get away with it? Because <laughs> he's uh, he's half he's half or quarter Latino or something. One of his grandparents. No. Is Latino. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, he's half Jew, bro. I get, literally talking to a Jewish la la Latino. Drake isn't. He is one of his. Right, you think just because he jumped on Bad Bunny, he's got a quarter? No, 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 no. One of his grand, one of his grandparents is Colombian or something. 
I think you're making that up. Where did you obtain this bad boy piece of information? <laughs> Google it. <laughs> I've been sitting on it. <laughs> Can you man talk while I check this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Google I, it. I am. So wait, on his mum's side or his dad's side? I can't. I don't know which side. I don't know which side. Is oh. Drake Latino? I thought you heard it around the Jewish grapevine. No, 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 no. Okay. But it's on the Latino grapevine. Can you sure. shut up? His father is African American Catholic, and his mother is a white Canadian. Ah, uh, I thought. It Can was. you shut up, Colombia? Uh, I read somewhere. Uh-huh. Hey, well, anyway, there's an example. Why is he calling himself Champagne Puppy? He's not Latino. It's a handle. It's a handle. There you go. He's the exact type of person that would call himself. That's puppy. cultural appropriation, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> oh, Jada Pinkett Smith. And on the Jeez. on the continued narrative of just like wives who should probably just like rein it in a little bit, boy. A little bit? It's bad okay. enough that it's been, <laughs> what has it been? Hasn't it been 25 years since Tupac died yeah. or something like that? It's bad enough that she does like basically weekly, that's not weekly, probably not even monthly, be. but Should imagine. may as well be yearly dedications to this guy who apparently she had a platonic relationship with. They never banged. They were just very good friends in the school. Does anyone still believe that? Right? It's bad enough that she does that. But then... All of a sudden, the Smiths, who were like everyone's favorite couple way before J and B, right? Were everyone's favorite like goals. They decided that with all of their wealth, ridiculous opulence and wealth, that they wanted us to see them more. One of the worst fucking mistakes for their profile and their brand I think I've ever seen. Bro. They're literally the world's most obnoxious couple. Yeah. In all of Hollywood. Yeah. I was really on like the Will Smith Instagram wave for a while, oh. and then I wasn't. I can't deal with it. I will. Please. I will say that the the uh, the entanglement, brother. Chat can we start was, there? Was maybe I'm going to say the greatest Twitter weekend of all time. <laughs> I'm going to say the greatest Twitter weekend of all time. She came up with a new word. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and very, and actually to justify to, her schlaggery, we, we have to thank her for her service because that word has become. Very useful. Yeah, true. Okay, facts. Very useful. Mm. Um, She's come, second come on a future. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know what the Scientology laws are around divorce, but like, it's just so clear these two people shouldn't be together in the same country. Yeah. No, like, it's no, awful. I, I, I look at it deeper, bro. I think, and I'm not saying that this is going to work for everybody and I'm going to get your views on this after. Um, not everybody is built for monogamous relationships, especially when they are... <laughs> That long. They've been together for 25 years or something like that. They're 22 when they met. That's that's okay, right? If you have an agreement that that's the relationship you're going to have. And I think he's alluded to it. Because Will Smith, by the way, listen, is the reason why we're talking about this is he released his new book today and he's been doing all the promotional runs and all this other stuff. And it's all been very messy. That's why we're talking about this. Mm-hmm. He released the book. And there are many things in there about their sex life and all this other stuff and how their relationship changed and how he had to fight to keep it alive and all this normal relationship stuff. But what I don't get is clearly these this couple has an agreement whereby monogamy kind of went out the window at some point. Jada Pinkett is the only one of the two who has the fucking business on Front Street. <laughs> if Will Smith is out there banging Margot Robbie, as the rumor says, guess champ. what? It's, yeah, he's a G, number one. He's a champ. But Amen. second of all, it's a fucking rumor. We don't know if it's true. Yeah. August Alcina got messy, went out onto the streets and she was like, yeah, but it was an entanglement. She denied it first though. No account. She denied it first. No accountability. And then she's like, actually, it was an entanglement. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, An entanglement. And then every fucking week, this Facebook red table talk thing comes out. It's something or the other about (laughs) their sex life and how she, oh. She's just ruining this. How they're struggling, basically. Yeah, yeah. Brother. I mean. Of all people to tell, Gwyneth Paltrow, bro. So this is it. How would you rather your relationship disintegrated? Would you rather your missus eyed up Leo DiCaprio and then just ran away? Or would you rather she like went on a sustained campaign to embarrass you over the course of three years on YouTube? I would the probably... Ra- yeah, how would you rather your shit end At least in the Bezos Sanchez situation, they're not married yet and they're still like a... a, a just a, They're partners, right? I'm going to say I'm taking that way out. I think so I'm too. Taking, I'm, I'm taking, taking the Leo way out. Because what she, she's humiliating Will. She's humiliating. But like in a sustained fashion. In a sustained fashion. And it it leads me to believe, and I don't know how you feel, but it leads me to believe that he has done some madness behind the scenes. And she's playing this out in public because of how bad he did it. I just feel like he's not Tupac. (laughs) And and he gets punished for it every single day of his life. But isn't isn't he also like very low-key, low-key, but also very not low-key gay? Who, Will? Yeah. 
He's definitely so what? That's like a, that was like a rumor around LA a few years ago that he was definitely banging dudes frequently. But I mean, again, but again, rumor. Yeah. Early in his career, he like took. He didn't want to take a role because it involved like gay kissing and stuff. Sure, so, um, people who've hidden their but, homosexuality have never done anything like that in the past. Well, that's more of my point to support the fact that I don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So like, I, I, maybe she, maybe she just resents the fact that he's never wanted to fuck her, um, and his type is either dudes. No, but he's, no, Robbie. no, no. They've they've played. They've spoken about their healthy sex life, and even in the midst of the recent controversy, she came out and said like, "There's no problems." with our sex life. The problem is, is that when you overshare, you leave way too much for this Twitter generation to interpret on their own. And you can't come out after the fact, after you've been spilling your stuff. And I know that's your whole thing on the Red Table Talk, but you can't then come out and be like, ah, oh, I got time today. You guys have got this completely wrong. Me and Will have got no problems. You literally, every opportunity you get, talk about the issues within your relationship. You and invented the entanglement. Which, which, like, then makes him, which, which then makes him do it because just, he's in this book talking yeah, about it. Yeah, like it's just crazy. <laughs> and now I'm seeing and now I'm seeing memes flying around where it's like, oh, did you read the section in Will Smith's book where Jada Pinger apparently told him to dress up as Tupac one night for role play? Uh-uh. Oh, brother. Uh-uh. We can't have Will go out like this. Where he is, is he one is? of our heroes, no. Oh, no, we mad. can't <laughs> have his no, we can't have his character chopped up like this. <laughs> no. I saw but, one tweet that was like J. Cole don't want that Will and Jada love anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too. I saw that too. I want to know how does one dress up as Tupac? Like what? Ba- ball off your head. You put a bandana tied up at the front. Is it dungarees and, and Timberlands? Is yeah, he's already got the goatee, right? So he's good. Oh, Nose rings. Yeah, just uh-huh. baggy jeans. Jesus. And then just like over it. Dress up, up as two, but that's mad. So you, you, you just, gotta walk. You, you just, got to you just walk. over enunciate your words. Like, <laughs> Hennessy, enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Peter. Shut up, Peter. Now you've got to walk. You've got to walk. By the time you're asked, your, your missus is asking you to dress up as your ex so that she can get it in. You've got to walk. I don't know if it's oh, true. But right. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. I just, it's I'm just take, memes. I'm taking it as true. She's it got him well writing a, in his book about how jealous he was of Tupac and mm. how like he wished that Jada looked at him the way she looked at Tupac. Jesus Christ. Even after she picked Will over Tupac. Maz. Like he's had to live with this for 25 years. Mm. Mad. And she's still cornering him. Mad. On this damn red table. <sighs> it's crazy. It's what, a lot. What, what, um... If Will was in the room right now, lads, what 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 advice would you offer him? I was like, you, I, I'd say, I'd say, look, you you basically saved the planet in Independence Day, and this woman still doesn't want. You saved us from robots. So robots. Um, you and Tommy Lee Jones did bits. You saved us from aliens. Yeah. Um, like you're like you're about as alpha as it gets, and she's still. What not was playable. the one with him and the dog? Oh, um, I am legend. I am legend. You yeah. saved up. What was? What were we running away from there? Hancock. That was Hancock as well. Aliens, was, aliens as well. He, he saved us from aliens twice. He, uh, quite a few times. Quite a few times. Yeah. Uh, he's he done Hancock, a lot of madnesses. The laziest superhero ever. Yeah. He, he was, was lazy iconic, as Hancock and goggles. still fuck shit up. Right. Uh, like you're about as alpha as it gets, bro. What's Tupac done? Yeah. Well, he, he died. Ooh, above the rim. He died. Ooh, yeah, like, he juice. Died. Yeah. Like he, Tupac died, and Will Smith survives almost every role. So, okay. uh, like he's as alpha as it gets and she's still like, is clearly not playing ball. It's time to walk, bro. It's, it's time to walk. Mad. It's fucking mad. Look. Or get a neuralizer or neutralizer, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, just, and just zap Tupac out of yeah, the No, he just flashed Jade and yeah. be like, I'm Tupac now. Boom. And then she wakes up and there you go. There Problem you go. solved. Then you can be here. I'm just thinking about the kids, man. The kids must just be thinking. I know the kids are a little bit. They're already fucked They're up. all a bit zesty in their own ways, but yeah. like. Zesty. Um, <laughs> That's a mad choice of words. <laughs> but I'm just, I just think about them. Like, what must they be making of this? Oh. Millions of dollars. Yeah, they must be just fair. be thinking, oh, that's mom and dad. <laughs> they're making <laughs> just they're, another day. Yeah, just another day. <laughs> They've just internalized this fuckery to a extreme degree, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have to. No wonder they're so fucked up. Similarly to the baby, I just want to say to Will Smith, look, bro, good luck, man. Like, all the best to you, Jada. Reign it in, love, because this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Um, you should not be chopping down a king like that <laughs> in this fashion, okay? You are beautiful. You're successful in your own right. I know you got to keep yourself, you got to justify your existence a little bit on that red table, but please. I mean, just, yeah, I think, I think it's run its course. Does she still do red table talk with her mum and Willow? Who knows? 
Because if that's the case, that's multi generational corn. Like, <laughs> you're embarrassing your husband in ra- front of his mother in law and her. And his daughter. What are you saying? Is, bro, is she, is she the, people is she... will be going up on that show and just making a mockery of themselves full stop. Like some of the women that go on there, like what was it? Steph Curry's wife who went on there and was like, I know I've got an amazing husband and I've got this amazing life and everything's blessed and I've got these beautiful kids, but I actually just want other guys to find me attractive and come uh-uh. up to me and all this. And it's just like, bruh, brother, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> talking come on, man. About? They can't win. Anyway. Can't win. Um, shout out Will, man. Shout out Will. Justice for Will. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, no, you've done nothing actually. Um, but um, there's been a bit of a scandal in the old House of Commons, hasn't oh, there this week? Just a little one. Something to do with MPs and second jobs. Something like that. Part-time MPs, yeah. Do you want to break it down? What's been going on? Um, so the whole scandal blew up last week because a bloke called Owen Patterson um, was caught doing something that MPs have done f- since time immemorial, which has been on the take from corporate interests and earning a shit ton more money than they do in parliament by working for companies outside of parliament. Um, This bloke was a particularly egregious case that got picked up with the press because he was taking money from Randox, whose adverts you would have seen doing the old uh, quick testing shite. Randox got Pete hostage right now, boy. And, uh, and And the conflict was that he apparently lobbied the government to get them a whole bunch of contracts. Uh, uh, which it later turned out the army had to help deliver because like they got so much business they couldn't actually deliver it themselves and the army then had to deliver all the shit that Owen Patterson who's earning 100 grand a year off them had sorted for them anyway mm. blew the gasket open um, on other MPs who are also on the take um, the, the bit that was particularly egregious is that the, basically the commissioner of standards in parliament was going to be like this guy's fucked you can't do this and then Boris Johnson who's also under investigation because of his dodgy wallpaper you might remember he yeah. got the Tory donors to pay for his wallpaper. Um, basically said, well, fuck the, sta- fuck the um, commissioner. We're going to change the rules around um, how we judge people are on the take. So we're going to suspend it. And then Parliament's going to vote to change the rules. And so Par- he managed to whip Parliament to change the rules. 24 hours later, because there was such a backlash, then undid the vote where people had, like all the Tories had voted to like basically sanitize corruption and then had to vote against it 24 hours later. Proper jokes. Anyway, so a whole bunch of other MPs then started having their shit dug into because Owen Patterson fucked it and Boris fucked it. And it turns out that a bunch of other MPs are on the take. Um, MPs, including but not limited to. Are they all Tories? Basically, if you look at the list of like the top 30 earners, 29 are Tories. And there's one Lib Dem. Um, select favourites are Andrew Mitchell's on 180k a year. Julian Smith's on 144k a year. Chris Grayling, the former transport secretary. You might remember the bloke who was famous for hiring a ferry company to help with the Brexit transition that owned no boats. No. But yeah. A serial failure in government, famous for it. Uh, okay. It's on 100k a year from a ferry company. Okay. Um, in and, addition. Yeah. And maybe you should tell the listeners how much these MPs earn in we'll their day job. So the, Are you going to get there? Yeah, we're, we're going to get there. Don't know. Let me land. Um, Why do we say that? <laughs> uh, John Redwood is on 200 grand a year. Uh, and then shout out, special shout out, to Natalie Elphick, uh, oh, famous friend of the show, friend of the show, famous for telling Marcus Rashford st- to stick to his day job. Yep, mm. has been found to have a second job. Ah, oh, of course. Okay. As well, um, the most the most egregious no? case, however, is none of these people. The most egregious case oh. is a chap who who Brexit fans uh, may remember called Jeffrey Cox. There he is. Who stood up in Parliament with his baritone voice and oh. defended Theresa May. Actually, no, fucked Theresa May in Parliament, but. Discussed the oh, not policy okay. of withdrawal and the Northern Ireland backstop in, in, a, in yeah. a voice that was very nice to listen to. I quite like um, his voice. To be he's uh, he's earned a million quid <clears throat> in the last year. Doing what? So, I'm so hate, glad you asked. Don't hate the player. Uh, I'm so glad you asked. He is a very successful barrister and has has been a very successful barrister for a very long time. Paid the cost to be the boss, baby. He, funnily enough, as a as a former Attorney General and a current sitting MP, was defending the British Virgin Islands. Yeah. Who are currently being sued by the Foreign Office. Okay. <laughs> uh, his own foreign office as a Tory MP, mm. uh, whilst uh, using his parliamentary office to do so. Ah. Um, Which is a big no-no, by the, the way. British, British Virgin Islands being a tax haven. This guy was defending a tax haven from his office being sued by the government that he works for mm. and earning a million quid a year for it. 
small conflict of interest. There's a few different small. Thre- there's a few different threads lobbying, you might and lobbying. you um, yeah, yeah. you might you might disagree with. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that as we wrap up this micro section of the topic, the biggest shout out of all, the man who catches strays on every episode, Keir Starmer. Here we go. Uh, was also lobbying to have his own second job in 2017. Oh. For a company uh, called uh, Mishkondiraya, oh. which was done for tax so fraud. So I, I have a, an old, no longer friend who used to work there. Right, who were investigated for money laundering. Uh, Keir Starmer wanted a job in 2017. They were investigated for money laundering in 2018. Jezza wow. himself said that Keir wasn't allowed to do it. Saved Starmer from himself in hindsight. Oh. So Labour are now coming out saying, no, no, Starmer refused the role himself, which is bullshit. Jez stopped him doing it. Anyway, as you can see, almost everyone is on the take for second jobs. And so the argument has somehow moved away from should MPs uh, be lobbying government on behalf of companies that they work for, which is an entirely good and reasonable debate to have, to is 80 grand a year enough to live on? And I did a bit of research and 80 grand still puts someone firmly in the top 5% of UK earners. So what do you think? Do you think that they should be allowed to have second jobs? So... This is where it will get, this is where I end up getting uh, attacked, basically. Uh, so my view is that MPs should earn more than 80 grand a year. How much should they earn? That is not necessarily for me to decide, but I think the number should be higher. Is 80 grand a year a lot of money? Yes, 80 grand a year is a good salary. Yes. It's a very good salary. Yes. It With a healthy five... expenses account as well. Let's not sure. forget that part. Absolutely. Put you in the top 5% of earners, it's a nice amount of money to live on. It's a lot more than the vast majority of the working population uh, get. However, however, for the quality of people that we want representing us in Parliament and the quality of people we want running the country, 80 grand a year is likely to be a pay cut. People are put off from getting into politics and becoming MPs because it isn't profitable. Okay. There are many, many jobs the type of people we want to be MPs could do for a lot more money and a lot less stress. Feel you. All the campaigning about is 80 grand a year, a lot of money, I feel is coming from the wrong angle. People who are on 80 grand a year are much closer in their economic circumstance to people on 20 grand a year than they are to the Tory donor class and to MPs who are taking in a combined 14 million a year across 144 people. The type of people who are rich enough to donate to the Conservative Party to influence policy and to run companies like Randox yep. are in a different stratosphere to MPs earning 80 grand a year. The modern left, the Corbyn left, the Labour left have an obsession with policing what is in other people's pockets. The argument shouldn't be, is 80 grand a year enough for someone to live on? It should be one, addressing the economic system and convincing people to vote for an economic system that raises everyone else up towards that 80 grand a year from 20 grand a year and get, puts more money in all people's pocket, but also doesn't shit on the concept of aspiration. What I think this argument has lost sight of is that poor people do like making a shit ton of money and a lot of people grow up wants to make a shit ton of money. And the idea that demonizing people for earning 80 grand a year is productive politics, I think is... Fallacy. I think most people want to be comfortable. I don't think most people want to earn a shit ton of, a shit ton of money. Sure. Um, we all have relative scales of what comfort is. 80 grand a year goes a lot less of a way in London than it does in rural Devon. Your How much money you have at, left the, at the end of the month if you're spending 80, 80 grand geez. a year? 80 G's is, is, is comfortable in London, bro. Yeah, it's comfy. It's good. It's good, but it's not as much as MPs could earn elsewhere. And that's kind yeah, of the point I'm making. Ha- it's, I, also, I, it's also 80 grand a year. I like get your, I said, I get your it's point. It's 20 grand a year than it is to 2 million a year. I get your point. I think most industries are capped though, right? If you're getting into, if, you, if you're going to be a nurse in the NHS, for example, you there is a trade-off, Sure, right? so we need to pay nurses more. Of course, of course. But I think That needs to be the nature of the argument. Oh, absolutely. I'm not going to disagree with that at all. But I do think there is always a trade-off in certain industries that you want to work in. Yeah. From a salary perspective. And you have to accept that when you go in. And if you are sure. a civil servant, if you are an MP, et cetera, et cetera, that is part of the consideration that you have to take in Absolutely. when you're applying for the role. Absolutely. I get your point if given the choice between earning more in a less stressful job versus earning less in a job which is very high profile, quite stressful, you're probably going to go with the former. But I do think we're giving them a little bit of a cop out by yeah. focusing predominantly 
on salary yep. more yep. so than the actual job that they are and the duty um, that they are uptaking by becoming exactly. MPs in the first place. So this is the bigger yep. point. This is the bigger point. Should MPs have second jobs? Now, there are a lot of MPs, for example, who work as doctors or nurses. Those kinds of jobs are quite obviously fine. There is absolutely no conflict of interest. Where the Tories are having a fucking field day with the messaging around this is they've gotten off scot-free because nobody is talking about peddling influence. Everyone's arguing about is 80 grand a lot of money. And that's why this argument is fucking stupid. They are all peddling influence for companies that are paying them. That's corruption. That's what the argument needs to be focused on. It should be entirely illegal for MPs, not just lobbyists, MPs to be lobbying government and influencing policy for companies that they are clearly taking cash from, right? And at the moment, it's effectively not illegal um, because they're all basically doing it. Um, and there needs if 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 they if MPs are to apply for second jobs, my view is that they should only effectively be jobs that are explicitly in the public good. Mm, does does uh, Owen Patterson advising uh, Randox because he has some health experience help the state? No, that helps Randox, right? So there's a clear difference between MPs who get second jobs as doctors or nurses or fucking we could do with some truck drivers at the moment, for example, yeah. right? Mm. Um, it needs to be very clear that. If an MP has a second job, it is for the good of the public, yeah. if not their constituents. And the majority <coughs> of their time needs to be focusing on working in Parliament. 100%. And I feel like those people that do pedal influence, once they're done being an MP, for example, they could go on to these jobs, these like high-end private sector jobs yeah. as well. So in that sense, <laughs> them peddling that influence is also part of a kind of aspirational like art for them to yep. go from MP to those private um, positions. Yeah, I think to answer the question, yeah, they can't. They should have second jobs. But to to your point, Johnny, they sh it should it should very much serve the public interest. Mm -hmm. If you're like working for Randox and you're actively influencing policy that will help you and help them, but not help the public, that is wrong. Yeah, um, and it should always be wrong. And I mean, I feel like the government. It's corrupt in plain sight yep. because they are retroactively trying to change policy yep. in order to make sure that Owen Patterson doesn't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like, if that isn't corrupt, I don't know what it is. It's as fuck you as it gets. You know what I mean? It's fuck you corruption. Like Dave Chappelle's got fuck you money. This is fuck you corruption. Right? Mm -hmm. This is as, as bad as it gets. Like, shout out, also shout out a man like Jeffrey Cox. This is why I can't say Owen Patterson's a proper pussy all because he was only <laughs> only getting a hundred grand a year from Randox, whereas Jeffrey Cox is basically like being the case of the defense against his own government whilst as a sitting MP. But on top of that, more egregiously, was renting out his flat in London for two grand a month whilst claiming expenses Ooh. for a second flat Maza. in London. Brother. That hey, he actually lived in. Don't, don't hate the player. If, that is actually entirely legal yeah. under MP's rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're going to be corrupt, yeah, do it proper. Do it well. <laughs> do it For proper, real yeah. though. Do for real proper. though. If you're going to be on a take, <laughs> take. Yeah? For real, don't though. dip little fingers in the pots. <laughs> It'll be sloppy. Just take the whole. So pot. what's so what's the next? What's latest at the moment? Anyone anyone getting locked up? So this is this is great because the Labour Party is so fucking ineffective. The uh, discussion bruv, has gone away from. Why do you do this? Why do you do this every time? Because why pay... is this always an opportunity to say if Labour weren't so shit? Because I pay four I mean, pound a month. Aff I pay four pound a month. So then you also have the opportunity to. They're shit not effective. Them. Yeah, so it's because they're so I ineffective, mean... we're now talking about Keir Starmer's getting fucked instead of all these bent MPs on the take. Is anyone going to go to jail? No, obviously not. They've all had second jobs for 20 years. They've all had second jobs for 20 How years. How is Keir Starmer going to try and like, oh, you shouldn't do that? Well, he can't. That's why that's, he's not saying That's my point. He so can't really... He hasn't said anything. Of course. So he's very lucky that basically Jezza saved him a few years ago in hindsight. Um, but because basically this this entire like ecosystem of fuckery has been protected by a media industrial complex and MPs on the take all working together to keep this hush. So they've all actually got their all, they've all got their grubby fingers in the same fucking jar. Is anyone gonna go anyone gonna go to jail? Obviously fucking not. Yeah. Because they'd all end up in jail. I just just no one asked me, but I'm gonna give my opinion. I don't think MPs should be allowed to have second jobs. At all. But to your point, they should just be paid more to dedicate themselves to this one super important job. So how much should they be paid? Bro, I personally think if they're on 80K with the expenses account, they're probably living a pretty decent life. I just think it's the greed that makes them want to do all this other stuff and the positions that they have that make them explore these other ways of boosting their money, right? If you take a break from being a barrister because you want to be an MP, that's your decision to do that. That's your decision to do that, right? So 
I don't know. I asked you the question and now you've thrown it back at me. I'm not really sure, but I don't know. If you, where'd you go from 80K? You're probably going into the six figures mark, right? I don't know. But I personally think that this 80, was it 80K, 81,000 or something that they earn. Mm -hmm. do, Comfy. Do cabinet ministers earn more? Uh, don't know. I, I'd suggest probably. I, I guess secretaries of state would earn more than a standard MP. And I think if you sit on more committees, you get a bit of a boost. Was Owen Patterson in the cabinet? Uh, no. Okay. He wasn't in the cabinet. I don't think so. Uh, Isabel Hardman wrote a book called Why We Get the Wrong Politicians. It's a good book if you like Westminster shit and you're a nerd like I am. It explains how difficult it is to become an MP. Mm. It costs something like 40 to 60 grand of your own money. For real. To run. Why? Just to run. Because you get very little, because there's not a lot of money, it, there's not a lot of money in our campaign process compared to the US. Parties don't give a lot of cash to candidates. You need to have a serious amount of cash. Basically, let's say, for example, I wanted to run and be an MP. It's very unlikely I'm going to get a seat anywhere in London, right? So I need to move my family up north, pick a constituency, go and live there, kind of get lucky, hope I get selected, spend 40 to 60 grand of my own money, depending on how contentious the seat is, to get selected and then to get elected. And then, depending on my wage, possibly take a pay cut just to go and be an MP. Mm. Unless you are of significant economic means, or have an unbelievable campaign base behind you, which is unlikely, it's it's very likely that it comes at significant financial cost just to become an MP. Should we be cutting people out of becoming MPs because they can't afford it? No, that's not good for the country. So it's structural. There's, yeah. a, there's a whole thing that needs to be addressed within the structure. Correct. I want my MPs dedicating their whole shit to being MPs. Yeah, fair. So pay them more. But I don't think they should have second jobs. Make access to, <clears throat> make access to being electable easier as well yeah so we've got quite a nice is that in the range of us interest though is it in the government's interest no it's, it's certainly not in the conservative party's interest right so this is another thing where like labor needs to grow up and get into power so they can change this kind of thing because the tories are obviously not going to do it because like they could just fill parliament with ex-city boys and lawyers uh -huh. <laughs> and then, like all these people can second jobs the, yeah all these people can afford yeah. to take the pay cut very good very good i guess one more on this later hopefully this uh this heats up, so we have more to report as this develops over the coming weeks. But Owen Patterson um, can suck out. But yeah, yeah. Shout out Owen Patterson, bro. As I say, don't hate the player, hate the game. Baby. Shout out Jeffrey Cox, Uncle Jeffrey. He's de he's he definitely invited to White Boy Summer. Yeah. But the way that he's rinsed the government. Yeah, no, he's. But now he's I know right. where all my Randox money's gone. It's gone to all. Oh yeah, it's yeah, gone yeah, 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 yeah. Comes back a year. Five we, I've been giving Randox some cash. Yeah, that's like gosh, at some least two hundred pounds. Yeah. Run me my check, Owen. Jesus Christ. And it's not even all that helpful because you've got to go to these awkward little drop-off points in Croydon and all these random places. It's not Croydon. even cool. Yeah. So annoying. My nurse is in Croydon. Fuck no Randox. Way. Fuck Croydon. Randox. <laughs> More like to catch that in Croydon. Yeah. Shout out Dante Labs. You just bang that in the post. Um, <laughs> but yeah, very, very good. So racism is still alive, motherfuckers. Uh <laughs> What a segue that is. Man. Yeah. Um, one of England's most historic sporting clubs is embroiled in a damning episode hmm. accused of being institutionally racist by one of their former players. No. It's cricket, by the way. Um, Azim Rafiq, a 30-year-old former cricketer, says he was left close to taking his own life after dealing with racism at Yorkshire County Cricket Club, who have been rebuked for their response to it. Rafiq first spoke out in September 2020. Chairman Roger Hutton resigned last Friday and on Monday, Lord Patel took over, apologising to Rafiq and praising his bravery as a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. Head coach Andrew Gale has been suspended as part of an investigation into a tweet he sent in 2020, 2010. You said that tweet was... 2010, yes. And it reads, thought you might pipe up, button it, yid. Oh, Johnny's going to get hot in a second, baby. He said that to Johnny. He said, oh, he said it to Johnny? It's, it's about, it's okay, about cool. Me. Now that I have context, he might have deserved it. Um, um, <laughs> Yorkshire received the findings of the investigation in August 2021. Initially said they would release a statement in the next couple of days. Two days later, the England and Wales Cricket Board wrote to Yorkshire asking for a copy of the findings. The following day, Yorkshire, still yet to release the findings of the report, admitted Rafiq was the victim of inappropriate behaviour. Something he said was downplaying racism and offered him their profound apologies. Shout out Azim Rafiq. Yeah. Take them motherfuckers to the cleaners. Amen. Yeah. All day. The reason why I brought this up is because I don't think we've ever had a conversation about like the statute of limitation mm -hmm. on, on offensive tweets. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? 
we spoke about the baby, right? And obviously the baby, <laughs> I don't think baby had enough, quite enough time for this statute of limitation to really apply. I mean, he did it, <laughs> he did it on the spot. <laughs> and he's, uh, it's only it lasted a couple of months, hand. right? But um, we've obviously had a number of people who have grown up through the social media era. Yeah. Who have made a bunch of foolish mistakes along the way. Now, I am very happy to say two things about me. One, there is an offensive tweet, Facebook post, Instagram post out there. And the second thing is there is not a picture of my dick in any girl's phone. Because I, I went into that frigging sex texting shit. I never understood it. Never understood never it. Got it. I'm very proud to say those two things apply to me. But there are some people who those things do not apply to. Um, me. There are players, me. for example. I think it was Andre Gray. I think he's still at Watford. Who made a homophobic um, tweet about wanting to kill gays. There that was, was, there was Shane that. Duffy at Brighton who did a similar thing. There was Maya Jammer who used to banter about dark skin girls. Um, there was Jared Bowen who spoke about p white people trying to be black and then use hashtag nigger please. Um, yes, remember that. And most of these people have got away with it scot-free because the, there's a recognition that, you know, these people were doing it when they were young and they were dumb and they've grown up now and there's no way they could still be. What is your view on this? Do you think that it's... Do you think that there is a statute of limitation? Do we have to judge each tweet post by its individual merit? Like, what do you think? And I hope Wiley comes up. So <laughs> I've been I've been waiting for 28 episodes to address Wiley. <laughs> we started this podcast probably like two months too late. We would have started on the day of that Wiley shit. It would have been the baddest entry podcast this episode ever. Started this podcast for Wiley. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when I said earlier that the baby was a thought leader. Oh God, here we go. Uh, you all laughed at me. Uh, what the baby has done is established the price at which you can become uncancelled. Uh, what we are establishing here is the length of time after which one can become uncancellable, right? This is all a conversation within a similar context. How long ago is it okay that I was racist? That's ultimately the question. And is it fine or, that I was racist? And or offensive. Is it, is it fine that I was offensive? Five years ago? Is it okay that I was offensive? 10 years ago. It's all about establishing the market equilibrium. What's the price? What's the price, right? That's what's important. Will you expand? Um, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it a lot more deeply than that. Cool, yummy. <laughs> well, I mean, the tweet, Andrew Gale's tweet, it's from 2010. I have it on good authority that 2010, the early 2010s anyway, was a very wild time for Twitter. Yes. Mm. Everybody and their mother was more or less doing what he was doing. Yeah. Mm. Not only to, to Jews, but to black people, white people, everything. It was the time. Mm. It was the culture. It was the climate. Did it make it right? No. Retroactively looking back and punishing people, which is what's been happening for the be better part of like the last decade. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're dumb enough to have them up still. Yeah, yeah, this is another issue. Then you need to catch that corn. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, if you're sloppy enough, there are literally apps that allow you to t delete your tweets en masse. If you feel like at any point that you were in any way disrespectful. You know, and you know if you were on crud as well, innit? Like, you, you know, know. And you know. And you will get caught because yeah. there are bots and there are dregs of Twitter yeah. that will dig up your shit. Yeah. I, for me, the statute of limitation is quite clear. Uh, it, I, I can't remember. I think it was about two thousand seven, two thousand and eight. But for me, racism stopped <laughs> when Sher Lloyd uh, did turn my swag on by <laughs> uh, by Soldier Boy. Uh, Hop the, about my bed. On the turn my swag on. That was the end of racism. So, so like, yep. if you were racist after that. You're a dickhead. But like, if you tweet anything before that, like, I'm like, okay, bro. Like, society was different. Do you know what I mean? She hadn't performed. We didn't know. Like, we so didn't know why? each other. I feel like she single is... started the London riots as well. Shout out to Sherlock. Yeah. Shout out to Sherlock, big time. How do we free Wiley, bro? How do we free Wiley? Like I said. <laughs> Without paying you. Uh, well, Who the fuck are you, honestly? I mean, he can... <laughs> He can find <laughs> he can find another immoral Jew to sponsor him if he wants, but I'm immoral. Right yeah. Is there any Jew that backs him is immoral? Well, yeah. It's like this. Who the fuck are these gays to approve the baby? He needs whitelisting, right? 
He needs some shlomo with a kippah and, <laughs> and a lactose intolerance photo op. To, to basically to deify him. One and of them photo it. ops where they're just shaking hands that's and right. looking at the camera. That's right. I'll, like, I'll put my fucking tzitzi on and, and, and take a photo in, the, in, in, in some hill in Tel Aviv. Like I'll do that. There's a fucking price, yeah? There's a fucking price. And, and like this goes, it goes, again, this goes back to the, the baby thing. Can you find someone to vouch? Can you find someone to vouch that you're not a scumbag? And ultimately, the reason that this whole Yorkshire thing has kicked off... That can't be the only because way. because none of no, these players have found anyone to vouch Johnny, for Johnny, that can't be the only way. That People can't say, be the way. They, so more, does, more well, that's because they're going out and saying, oh, either I... Because I think Joe Root said that, um, who's the England cricket captain, yeah. captain, I believe, he said that he doesn't recall, because they were teammates at the yeah. time. Um, I don't recall ever hearing it or saying anything and stuff. Yeah. Whereas other people have said, I think Luke Balance said that, yeah, I remember recalling, I recall calling my man yeah. the P word. Yeah. So like stuff needs to be taken in context. Like us man. So he just admitted he called him a. Yeah. Raw. Yeah, it's pretty mad chat. Yeah. It's pretty mad chat. Context is important, right? Because how do you uncancel stuff? But when I make the joke about like people vouching yeah, for yeah, each course. other, it's like, it's a semi joke. It's semi important, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like us men all make jokes about each other in a private context where we're sitting together and we're all friends. Yeah. If someone said like, oh, listen, I heard Rich tweeted some shit about Yids. Like, I reckon this guy's got an anti-Semitism problem. I'd be like, yeah, obviously he does, but he paid me 10 grand, it's blessed. Um, it's about like, it's about it's about context, right? It is about context. And it's about mm. it's about having people in certain communities that, that vouch for you as not being offensive. And it's about taking Connet out of context. Like, we weren't in the room. Age, these guys, These guys were what saying some shit about, what do you mean about You say age? context, but like, what about age? If Maya Jama, for example, was 15, 16 when she was saying that wild shit. Uh, Context I think, is important, but what about age? Because Jared Bowen, I think, was also like 15 yeah, years yeah. old. And you know, it was Jared like- Jared Bowen as well. Huh? Jared Bowen, Jared Bowen said that thing about like, oh, when you got that one white friend who thinks he's black, hashtag nigger, please. Right, so he did that tweet like way back, but he was like 15 years Look, old. These... So context, yes, but age is quite important because we all had that, you know, back in the day. Don't for, don't forget, people used to call each other like Blick back yeah. in the day, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. darker than blacker sure. than black, which is sure. hugely yeah. offensive. Yeah, so yeah. like me and my brother will see each other and call each other a right? Which is awful Yikes. in, in, in both, both terms, right? It's about context. But more importantly, the... going back to, it's a great word to say, and I'm really sorry that neither of you can say it because it's quite satisfying. But going back to the more important point, um, the Jared Bowen and the Maya Jammer examples, if you asked either of them, do they still believe in these things? I'm guessing Maya Jammer would say she's grown up and learned. She mm -hmm. doesn't believe it anymore. I'm guessing if you asked Jared Bowen, because he's now on 40 bag a week and it's quite important, if you ask him, does he believe in it? He would probably say no. If you ask someone like Andre Gray, yeah. does he still think that gay people are subhuman? He'd probably still back that. You're and that's, racist. I think, where you make... No, that's you, where you that's racist. The distinction. That's racist. Why is it racist? Why, why, why can't he have changed? Because when did he, he, say it? he has quite yeah, strongly held long, beliefs. Long, long, long ago. ago. But long he was ago. challenged about it more recently. And he was like, oh, but if you think differently, then you're criticized. The standard, standard defiant chat. It's about do people still believe the shit that they said when they said it when it was mad? So we need to revisit it, basically. We need to... Uh, I think it is worth it. Yeah, we need to revisit it and see. So what do you think about this tweet? Do you, uh, do you have a revised take on this? Yeah. And if they have, yeah, I if think they have then we're like, cool. We forgive you for the past. Yeah, I think people change, right? People, people, people say dumb shit all the time. Okay. Noted. People say dumb, dumb shit all the time. Noted. Um, who do you think was at fault for uh, the Astro World? Um, bullshit. Ah, oh, very clear. I'm going to let our music expert talk about this one. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, Travis Scott's annual, well, it's kind of annual, his annual concert, Astro World, was unfortunately um, derailed, I guess you could say, by a crowd surge, which ended up killing, last time I read, eight or nine people. Um, of varying ages, but mainly young people. And there was a huge furore around the fault and where fault could be placed. Because mm. ultimately, at his vantage point, it is recognized that Travis could potentially have seen some of that commotion taking place and didn't necessarily take all the steps he needed to to stop the concert in motion um, and thereafter. It does bring a much wider conversation about safety of kids um, at these shows. Myself and Yemi have been to a Travis Scott show and my God, it was insane. Was so like we, you can easily, you can easily, coming away from that concert, see how people might die at a Travis Scott show. Oh, um, Didn't he do the McDonald's advert? 
Um, he did a McDonald's advert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a partnership um, with McDonald's. Yeah, he did a partnership. Did he? Um, no, yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah. It's like he's a mad guy. And one of the most mainstream. random parts of this whole story was this case of a nine-year-old who was apparently somewhere near, who was in a coma um, up until Shit. very recently. I mean, with respects to that family, <sighs> what are you doing? Bringing your eight or nine-year-old to a freaking Travis Scott show, yeah. man. Like, do your research, please. I beg. But also, like, there was the story of this guy who'd, like, he'd done a video interview for a security guard role. And, like, he had no experience at all whatsoever yeah. and didn't even have to provide ID. These shows, man. I know. And he was, and he was security. He's given yeah, security. He was security shows, the show. These shows are cutting, co they're cutting costs all over the place. Um, and the ways that they do that are in areas where they need to be spending the most money. Everybody knows that security costs a lot. You know, like getting police to attribute resource to you costs a lot. Uh, and if you cut corners because you essentially want to make a profit, that's where you start putting people at danger. But what's your view on it? What do you think we could, what do you think they could have done differently? Um, well, I checked out a video um, by Sean C. Shout out to Sean C. He's like a big music YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And it was like a clip of Travis's reaction to what was going on, the commotion. Yeah. Um, for about... What seemed like two or three minutes, he was a bit concerned, like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? He even ran to the back of the stage and came back out and resumed performing, um, which kind of let you know that he didn't consider it that much of an issue, even mm -hmm. if he did see an ambulance going through the crowd. Um, I think this is a complete failure across the board um, from the organisers, Live Nation, to Travis himself, to um, the police, to security. Everybody's got to take an L here. Um I feel like there was no regard for people's safety. People, when you have kids, teenagers climbing to the top of the stage, telling security, stop the show, mm -hmm. people are dying. If you don't then stop the show or try to force some kind of interruption of the show, I'm sorry, but you've got a hold, you've got a hold down, you've got a whole responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's like literally what happened. I've, we've seen clips, we've seen, you know, the kind of imagery yeah. that's been associated with this tragedy. Um, and, the police seemingly warned Travis as well about the impending, you know, danger um, before he went on stage. Travis then chose to go on stage and perform. Um, and his response as well, his apology, just yeah, his, his, way below Yeah, it was nasty, man. Way like, below his, his apology was nasty. He got on like an Instagram live or something like that. And he was just like very melodramatically and theatrically just like rubbing his face and yeah. just like just but he like he was in a partnership with some uh, mental health it was so company. and I, f I love fucking Travis Scott man and here's the thing like, I love this guy and <laughs> he's so sick and Astro World means so much to Houston yeah like, man if you watched his documentary on Netflix he basically said that Astro World is an extension of an old like theme park from Houston that didn't happen in that like had to shut off, down yeah. had to shut down um, so Astro World is kind of like a spiritual successor for that so clearly He's about putting on for his city, providing opportunities, providing jobs, providing just, you know, memories for the citizens of Houston, but right. also just like the whole world that comes right. through and marvels in it. So for this to happen um, on his watch, I know he's not involved in like the day-to-day -day plan and of course he's not, but like you saw an ambulance, you didn't really do much. You had security being warned of, of, mm -hmm. of, of things and you didn't do anything sort of thing. So... You know, it's 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 sad because I I I love Travis as well, man. I think he's yeah. like a genius. Yeah, like in a, in a lot of different ways. Yeah, um, he has not handled this well. And even if a lot of things were out of his control, as far as like trying to contain the danger, mm -hmm. how he's reacted, yeah, nothing short of terrible. There are fans. Sorry, there are artists who have such a contempt for their fans, and you can see it when it comes to performances because they're the guys who show up late. They're the guys who show up late and do, and do short shows. They're the people who don't do autographs, who don't really want to talk to their fans, who have this distance, even if it's on social media, have this distance between their fans. Travis Scott isn't that. And that's the heartbreaking thing about this whole thing. He fucking loves his fans, man. He loves them, right? Mm. And you felt that love at the show. We saw him at the O2 in London. You felt that love. Like He genuinely rocks with his people. And he's like, he's in that sort of intersection between like being a rapper who does all the trap stuff, but is quite influenced by like live shows of like rock bands where mm -hmm. it does get a bit wild and they do open up the pits and they do do massively over crazy like mosh pits and stuff. But he ultimately is a nice, nice person. He's quite elusive and mysterious, but like he's a nice guy and loves his fans. It's heartbreaking that this has happened, but I can't, to Yemi's point, I can't really look past, you know, them carrying on when it had been deemed a mass casualty at this show. They carried on, you know? So when it's all said and done, 
yeah, everybody here has to take an L. But yeah, man. To that, to that point about him, him being like a nice guy, on the flip of, you know, him being an amazing performer, there's also this kind of reputation when it comes to Trevor Scott shows of you basically having survived it. Mm. Like we've been to those shows. We've seen how mad it gets, especially the mosh pits. Mm. And he kind of revels in that. He mm. revels in the idea of like his fans going through the mud for him and really just like coming through the other side. Like even if you were banged up a little bit, it's cool. Mm. He kind of thrives off that. Maybe it's the showmanship. I don't know. But yeah, this case is just a very extreme case of that going very, very wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, his reaction to it has not yeah. been great. I, 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 we're, we're six foot plus, you know what I mean? So we came out of there, I was sweating like I've never sweat before, but I loved the show. But I knew that I got out of that mosh pit for the most part because of my size. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I can keep people at distance. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm probably a little bit less uh, uh, attractive in terms of like the younger kids who are trying to mosh. They'll probably stay away. But to Yemi's point, like if you're smaller, if you're a little bit more frail, but you love Travis Scott, you could get eaten. Eaten in that mosh pit. I was going eaten. to rucksack. So like yeah, people yeah, were bouncing yeah. off me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And getting, Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just oh, knocked shit. out by the rucksack. But yeah, it was mad. Uh, so like, it's been quite a visceral reaction, right? But like, the baby gets cancelled for talking shit about gay people. Dave Chappelle gets cancelled for not even talking shit about transgender people. Does Travis Scott get cancelled for letting people die at his concert? Mm. Well, I, I don't know if he's going to get cancelled. Um, Do you and it's, it's, it's also no I don't cancel him I don't cancel him I don't him cancel him either because it's a collective L it's a collective L right and everybody needs to take their responsibility in this um, his actions after you know offering to support the families and funeral costs refunding everybody who went to to, to Astro World as a concert like from a financial standpoint he's not taking a selfish stance of business is business I'm cashing in no matter what. So he has ultimately shown remorse in the immediate way that he can financially, right? What there come, what then comes after is the tough part because you can't bring back those those dead kids mm-hmm. and you can't pay your parent, their parents back for that. Um, so he's going to be going through a level of pain um, that isn't anywhere near that of the families. But this guy, this isn't a guy who set out intentionally to, to create an environment which was harmful for his fans. I, c- I can't buy into that narrative just because I know from knowing him and so much how much he loves his fan. And I don't know him as a person. So I might, this might be bullshit what I'm saying. He might be a horrible person who's good at acting. But I believe in humanity still. And I do not want to cancel him based on what is ultimately a hugely horrible, horrible tragedy, which is ultimately a massive accident. Mm-hmm. Possibly a result of some negligence, but ultimately... An accident. And he's gonna have to live with the emotional trauma for the rest of his life. Yeah. Astro World isn't coming back. Like Yeah, I think. I yeah. Don't think. I mean, bro, like it would can't. you wanna ins- would you wanna insure that if you're an insurance company? Would exactly. you wanna insure that? Exactly. Someone will give it a pop. Yeah. For the price. Someone for the right price. price. For the right price. Well it's gone uh, for the man. time being anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, well and... so was um what was it? The uh so was Rolling Loud. Yeah. That went. And then Money Talks comes back. I don't think he gets cancelled either, for what it's worth. Yeah, I just feel like... He PRs his, his way out of his it. Fan, but he, he, yeah, he PRs himself out of it. all these footballers who said mad shit don't get cancelled. Yeah, and, and he's and, also... And, and Yorkshire cricketers who don't earn yeah. footballer money do get cancelled. And he's also, part of the biggest, uh, he's also part of the biggest, most influential family in the world as well. So it's, you know... It's and his fan base is crazy. Yeah. Like, in terms of size, yeah. but also, like, they're crazy guys, like, mm. generally. PR. PR, baby. But yeah. Yeah. PR your way out of it. But anyway... 100%. Um, RIP to those people um, who lost their lives at Astro World, man. It's uh, it's such a shame. Thoughts and prayers with the family. Parents, mm-hmm. do not take your nine-year-olds to a Travis Scott Jesus. show. Be careful taking your nine-year-olds to most concerts, right? Unless it's like frigging, I don't know, like... Peppa Pig. Yeah, you know what I mean? Be careful because these shows are becoming a little bit more crazy. People haven't been out a lot in the last 20 months. And when they get out, they're being more crazier than they've ever been before. Because they don't right. know when this thing's going to lock down. So just be careful. Do your research into the artists you are taking your kids to see. Even if you are with them. Because those mosh pits and the way crowds work, your kids could get sucked into that thing and you won't see them again. Uh, so be careful. Woo! Um, briefly, we had the amazing Kanye West, Noriega, EFN, Drink Champs interview. Clap it up. What was it? As Nori four would say. hours. I think it was four hours in total. Yes. Apart Across two one, parts. Two by the end of it. Across two parts. Drink Champs is amazing because you just get your favorite artists on there, get them to drink, ask them more questions. 
see and what then, happens. And then, the, and then see what happens. Just get lit. And then the guests just become more and more and more expansive and more and more revealing as they go along. I watched one with, uh, with one of my heroes, Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, and he got so licked. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like it. Right. He got licked. <laughs> um, because they then do like this, uh, this flash round of like questions about like uh, Biggie or Pac or like Method Man or Red Man or like Diddy or Jay or whatever. And if you, if you, if you defer, if you're indifferent, yeah. if you don't pick a side, you have to drink a shot. Oh, shit. Um, and they're difficult questions, right? So it's quite yeah, hard yeah, to pick yeah. a side. So things like that to cultivate an environment. Anyway, Kanye West went on there in one of his first proper interviews in years, by the way, um, post Donda, which is important. So it wasn't pre Donda. So it wasn't part of a press run. It was after the event. And he spent four hours talking about all kinds of shit. And look, I know you, you definitely saw it. I'm not sure if you caught it, Johnny. No, um, or but I did read about it. You probably caught some parts on the internet as well. But I urge everybody to, to watch it. What was interesting though, is um, him going on there, his special guest with him was the son. And if you listen to Donda, um, like Johnny has, who gave a very shitty uh, review of it. Uh, you, you'll know that Kanye West has, has a relationship Much with up. the son of the uh, currently incarcerated former kingpin, Larry Hoover. Um, and Kanye West, as it emerges during all of his fuckery in the White House, um, adoring, fawning over Donald Trump, was doing that for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons was trying to get Larry Hoover some uh, clemency. And uh, that's an ongoing process at the moment because apparently they are allowed to appeal and I think he's been I think they said 47 years yep. inside and um yeah I think it's uh quite an interesting pairing isn't it that <laughs> Kanye West man of God and and son of Larry Hoover who Chicago's he's trying to get free and apparently thugs of all time yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's not just yeah apparently Drake's involved as well and a mm. bunch of other people that are involved in trying to get him clemency as well yeah so well, what's your view on that Random, innit? Yeah. Hella random. Like, yeah. if that was what he was lobbying to Trump for, then why didn't he just say? Like, he yeah. kept it very vague what he was doing with Trump. Well, to an extent, of yeah. the, the actual detail of what he was doing with Trump. Only for him to kind of reveal it. Well, not even for him to reveal it. Like, Larry yeah. Hoover Jr. to reveal it on Donda, like, what, four, five, four, three, four years later? Mm. Seems a bit like... Yeah, Kanye West Convenient. is definitely trying to get some tax breaks as well. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, pretty mad chat. <laughs> what was the name of the film with Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx? Uh, oh, I didn't actually... Wa I still haven't watched that, very bro. Good. Very, yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, I know yeah, which I one you mean. Very good. Basically yeah. about all these unjust cases in Southern America um, that, that, um, that need to be re-examined, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there is a very real problem. Just mercy. Just mercy. Yeah, very real problem of sham prosecutions of innocent men caught up in a horrendous legal system that Kanye West could be... Kanye West could be lobbying for. This Larry Hoover guy, just to give some context. I think oh, I'm boy. Big Meech. This guy is about as guilty as it gets. <laughs> this guy is bang guilty. I did some reading into <laughs> oh, young gosh. Lawrence. Put your note, put your note down. Um, this is Johnny Vivas so he, um, speaking right now. He, uh, a friend of Rich Abbey Abbey. No, this is, no, no, well. this is Johnny um, Vivas. I just met so you, so I just met you, sir. Proprietor. This guy is in jail for some real serious shit. He's, he's not kind of in jail. He's fully, fully in jail, right? So like, he uh, he ordered the killing. Kind of in jail. He, he like, he ordered the killing of a guy. Didn't do it himself. Didn't do it himself, but got caught on a joint enterprise or whatever. Got sentenced to a range of 150 to 200 years. Uh, whilst he was in prison, he um, ended up running basically what it was a super team of Chicago gangs, like unified a bag of gangs across the racial spectrum in a very woke That's important. Method. No, that's in important. The 70s. That's important. Capo de tutti capi. All, yeah, all of them. All of yeah. them. Um, uh, and, uh, and basically had a 17-year wiretap operation from the feds. Wow. Who wow. caught him, him red-handed operating this like mega gang from inside jail that was reported to have earned $100 million a year across 35 states. And so he got an extra life sentence on top of his 150. So what you're years. saying is, is that he can't repent for his sins? That's not what I'm so saying. So what you're saying is that, I mean, how much would he have to give Sounds in like the it. church offerings basket to be forgiven by Lord Jesus? 100 mil. I mean, it's not for me to set a price. Oh, no, you don't want to? 
No, okay. no, 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 because this isn't Wiley's case. They're not uh, all the same. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, like, if Kanye West is going to beg for clemency it's for taking anyone... a lot of pride in just, like, keeping our black men down, isn't he, this guy? What's wrong with you? Carry from, on. From, no, from, no from, you carry from, on. From episode one, really. You carry on, Juan. There are many other cases that Kanye could have been lobbying the president for. Such Why as? pick this one? Why pick this one? Because he's from Chicago and he's GD. Yeah. GD is Gangster Disciples, which is Larry Hoover's gang of people don't know. Right. And Kanye used to hang out with a lot of GD guys. Right. And obviously he might see himself in Larry Hoover. Yeah. Larry mm. Hoover being an icon. Right. Mm. Of the people of Chicago. Mm. Even if Kanye it was... West, fundamentally very divorced five foot seven bloke thinks he's the hardest He's taller than you, relax. He's not. He's taller than you. He's not. He relax, relax. He's not relax. relax. He definitely is. Relax. It's cool though. Five foot seven. But yeah, mm. it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm the voice of a generation. But anyway... Um, <laughs> If you're going to beg for clemency for anyone, there's a whole bunch of people you could do it. There's, and this whole friendship with Trump was fucking sus anyway. How it tall was are you? super strange. Six foot. Bullshit. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Can you shut God your fuck? God is watching you now. Can you? God's, God's listening. Yeah, and he will verify. Brother, it's brother, a lie. Brother. It's not a lie. Anyway, you were saying. <laughs> How is that Kanye lie? West is five foot eight. I'm definitely... I'm, I'm, I know I'm six foot anyway, it is what it is. Um, there's plenty, plenty people that he could have begged for clemency for. This Larry Hoover guy is very sus. Anyway, I, I heard in this interview that um, one of my favorite bits that I read about this was um, that Kanye said that he was in a personal exile uh, in Japan after the Taylor Swift event. He did say and he that. said, quote, that he, w- he was in personal exile because all of Japan, uh, he was in personal exile in Japan because all of America hated him. And I was kind of wondering to myself, when was Kanye West more popular than when he did the VMA thing in 2009? Oh, no, no. The Taylor Swift thing was... That was like, that was it. Was, that a, was a very unpopular moment for him. Was it? Because well, it all went down after then. Popular that, was, that, was when, that was when Barack Obama called him I an mean, arsehole. And all popular in the sense that everyone was talking about him. Yeah. But unpopular in the sense that no one messed with him at the time. Yeah. I don't know. He signed his Yeezy deal like three years later. He yeah, but that's that fine. Unpopular. That's fine. I mean, Kanye West has never really lost his fame. Right. But in terms of the peaks and troughs of his career, having Obama badge you up in front of everyone and say he's a, you're a jackass it was a bit of a low point. <laughs> Chicago's biggest gangster, by the way. It's rude. The most, the most corrupt bloke. That's in rude. That's what Obama um, and Larry Hoover should go on a. Oh, if, a if anyone deserves to be in a federal prison between Larry Hoover and Barack Obama, definitely Barack Obama killed way more people than Larry Hoover did. Moving on. So, um, we are now going to be moving on to relationship <laughs> advice okay. provided by Juan Vivas. What, what's the Juan thing this week? It's Spanish for Johnny, no? It, well, Juanito is, is Johnny. Juan is John. There's no John here. All right, Juanito. Juanito. Is that right? Yeah, no, I'm good. Listo, vamos. Uh, so, uh, thank you to the submitter mm. this week. It's a bloke. Hey, I can't, well, do we, we've had we've had we've had a good, a good balance recently. Recently, um, this one we're back to the back to the men submitting. Yeah, um, I have been seeing a girl. It's quite short and sweet. This one, I've been seeing a girl for a couple months. We met on Hinge. So far, all has been good. We vibe together, have similar interests. Everything, as you can imagine, is going well. This is you. <laughs> I this well, absolutely not. Uh, I have previously uploaded her on my Instagram story when we've been on dates. Huh? And I've introduced her to a couple of my friends. She always seems to be reticent about inviting me to group events with her friends <gasps> and has never uploaded a story of me. Mm, lame. I've never really pressed on the topic of being uploaded to her Instagram because I can understand why people keep their online profile the way they do. But the way she never seems to want to invite me to anything that her friends are at or seems to find an excuse when her girls are on a night out is starting to give me concerns. <laughs> I really like this girl and I think that this could develop into something serious, but I'm not sure if she is either embarrassed or has something to hide. Do I confront her about keeping me a secret or what else do I? Brother, oh boy. Instagram is not real in the slightest. But that's that's kind of the point. That's kind of the point. He's not that fussed about the Instagram. She literally he won't seems intru- fussed about it. She won't introduce him to her friends. I was getting there. Instagram is not real. So put that tomfoolery in the bin. Don't mention it again. 
you're not certy in your relationship because you're on the IG. You're certy in your relationship if you're tapping that ass. Big facts. Now, her not wanting you to meet her friends and important people, I have to ask myself, how long have these guys been together? A couple months. Are they official? I mean, it, from what I gather, they've been together for a couple months. She's met his friends. He thinks, which is maybe the crux of the problem, he thinks it's basically a, a thing. Yeah, he thinks it's a thing. Right. Brother, people move at very different paces, allowing just about anyone to meet their significant people in their life, right? If you're two months in, chances are you probably don't even know some basic things about this new person that you are seeing. So focus on her. When the time comes, sir, you will meet the important people. Mm. You cannot assume just because you've uploaded a little picture on your story of you two that that has, I don't know, accelerated where you guys are in your relationship. Where you guys are, unfortunately, is still two months into a very new relationship with a stranger. I just liken it to me. Not everybody got the opportunity to meet mum. How very dare you? That's my mum. Big facts. Mm -hmm. I think meeting meeting the mother and meeting a couple pals on a night out. No, but is you get my but though. you get my point. You get my point. Like some people hold their friends and their family in such a highly pedestaled position that sure. not everyone has access. Hmm. So my brother, just relax. But also, it's not a thing of like. I did it, therefore she has to do it. That's not the way relationships work. And I feel like True. a lot of like modern relationships, if you will, it seems like I'm going to do this just so I get like bonus points. And therefore when you do it, you're going to get bonus points as well. Sort of thing. It's like a one-upsmanship type of thing. When rich Transactional, you feel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas relationships should never be that. Mm -hmm. They should be like, <laughs> well, not transactional. They should be, you should be in it because you want to be in it, not sure. because of like the look, all that Instagram posting. Come on, man. Yeah, I, I, I question. Um, sorry, listener, I question the resilience and overall fragility Ooh. of your, uh, of you. Oh, if you're already fragility, <laughs> if you're already questioning issues, one way to lose a listener. Yeah, if you're already questioning issues based on for me, very minor. Issues. What isn't a really big deal? Um, I'm trying to think back to all relationships I've had and the stage at which I introduced them to friends. And I know that like there's that initial excitement. Oh, this is this new person and they're great. But again, like how many first dates, how many dates do you even squeeze into the first two months? It can't be that many. Really? Can it? Once a week on average in the yeah. first two months? So you yeah. met them maybe like eight, nine times on a good week. You meet them twice. Unless they're the type of people that move really fast and maybe they have two dates in a week. Maybe it's going so well that, you know, they've accelerated what would usually take about a bit of time to much faster. Yeah. So maybe they're in a, a state in a relationship after two months where it's like, okay, you sh we should be meeting each other's friends. We should but, be meeting each other's But only one people. person feels that way. True. So, you know, you'll know when it's mutual because you'll get the invite. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't even bring it up. I wouldn't even say to her, so when am I going to meet you? I wouldn't even do it. Just relax. Enjoy this person, this new person who you know fuck all about because it's only been two months. Yeah, you still got a lot of getting to know to do yeah. as well. Very right. fair. What I would say is... What do you feel, Johnny? Do you, Juanito. Do you not think after... And I, I don't know how many dates they've had. That All I've got is that it's, it's been a couple months. Mm -hmm. But let's put a, let's say... Let's make a market nine to 11 times. Nine to 11 times that they've that they've met up. Um, do you not think after having met someone and been on nine to 11 dates and spent weekends together, whatever, you've got to have some kind of idea whether or not this person's worth introducing to your people? Yes. 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 Right. Yes. So I think the point that he's making is that she seems to go out of her way to stop that happening. Ah, I mean, <sighs> maybe she's not at that stage yet though. He yeah. clearly is. Yeah. But maybe it takes her a little bit longer to really fathom whether that this is a guy that she wants in her circle like that. You know maybe. I mean? People move at different paces. Or maybe. maybe, or maybe there's a male member of her friendship group oh boy. who is dicking her down. Oh boy. And she does not want the two to meet. Problems. She's, she's sauce.
Maybe she wants chaos. Because it, it would appear, Johnny, you think that she's hiding something. I mean, this is not <laughs> my <laughs> submission. Yeah, no, no, no. My this is take. yours. This is yours. What's Johnny? She's don't worry. <laughs> she loves you, bro. Like she's cool. She's cool. Sub- submitter. She'll invite <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a submission from a male this don't week. Don't worry, bro. She'll invite you eventually. <laughs> But I think, but I think, yeah, no, I, I don't think, look, I think if it gets to three months, maybe, yeah, I'd probably say just if we're being even conservative, <laughs> right? <laughs> if, if in three weeks that she's still doing it, that's your point. Three, no, no, no. <laughs> but three months is probably, you know, we talk about milestones in relationships, right? I think after the three month point, if you're still hanging out, three months is a really good number. I think two months is on the lighter side, but as you get to three, four months, that's when you can potentially do it all together. You could potentially introduce to the friends, the closest friends. Introduced to the parents if things are serious. Two months, bro. Like, you don't get much done in two months, man. It's still early. Yeah, you don't get yeah, a great deal done in two that. months. That's, it's I not exactly that. a milestone. So, so hang I in there. That. Listen, just hang in there. It's one of those where it's like, you can just like drop little hints if you want, but don't, I wouldn't say force the issue. I wouldn't make it like a conversational point, right? Like, don't do it. Like, just be be chill, be cool. It's going to happen for you. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be happier that it happened at a later date as well because you'll, you'll, you'll know that it's real. 100%. The relationship is real. It's not just a thing that you forced because you felt like you wanted to be in that kind of position sort of thing. Yeah. My advice to this listener is organize a night out with the boys when you know that she's going to be on a night out. Um, like find a club down the road or some shit. Go, there, go, there, go there with the man them and then text her be like, where are you? What are you up to? And if she's like, oh, we're out here. I, I'm in Brixton. And be like, oh, I'm also in Brixton. And if she swerves you, then there's a secret. You be- you both belong to the streets. One- <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a secret. Definitely a secret. Very good. As ever, get these relationship advice scenarios through to us um, on either of our individual Instagrams or via the Discord and Terribly Instagram page. Um, and we will do what we can with them. <laughs> <laughs> we will do our best. <laughs> I try yeah. not to par you in public. And finally, we'd be remiss... To yes. not take advantage of the fact that Yemi from Rhymes Like Dimes is here and not have a, a new music section. So without further ado, what should the people be listening to right about now? Well, an album I've been bumping heavy this week is by the one and only Mick Jenkins. Hey. Um, Mick Jenkins is a Chicago-based rapper who's mm-hmm. been around, I want to say since about 2013, 2014. He made a wave with his uh, mixtape The Waters and he's dropped his third studio <laughs> nice. album I believe yeah nice yes nice. Very good. Um, and he dropped his third studio album called Elephant in the Room uh, recently it is a flipping vibe it's definitely his best most cohesive album to date um, lyrically he's rapping on another level um, musically production wise it's just a lot of vibey dope beats very introspective bars um yeah, man, if you like that introspective... It's fire. You know, looking within yourself. <laughs> it's fire. Rap. The album is so fire. And sometimes that braggadocious stuff, then Mick Jenkins is your guy. Um, he's so dope. <laughs> he's very dope. I don't think he's everyone's cup of tea, um, but he's definitely mine. Um, so you should definitely check that one out um, and just check out his catalogue generally. Like, yeah, yeah. He's a very, very, very dope artist. Um, there's also a song that I've been bumping since yesterday, really, um, it's by a duo, a jazz duo by the name of Blue Lab Beats. Uh. Um, and they dropped a single called Labels featuring Tiana Major 9 Big and up. Kofi Stone. Who Big up. has been a... Friend of your show. Friend of my show. Come He's on. been a guest on Rhymes Like Dime, so shout out to Kofi. Um, yeah, man, Kofi is just one of those very like slick, very sick, lyrical brothers who kind of lean towards kind of more of the old school tribe, slum village type of sound. But, you know, for the modern day, um, yeah. definitely check out his uh, album, yeah. Nobody Cares Until Everybody Does, which is a very, very dope album. Yeah. And the song itself, yeah, man, it's just super dope. The Amazing. marriage of his vocals along with Tiana Major 9's hook, um, very, very dope. Over this like kind of very nice, kind of boom, bappy, crisp beat by Blue Lab Beats. So shout out to all everyone involved. Hey, hey, um, hey. And it also ends with just like really sick, like orchestral number after the kind of more boom, bap, production so yeah nice, man that's a bang on a half so mm-hmm. definitely check that one out i have yet to check out the new um silk sonic album yes bruno mars and yeah, me Pack. too me too we're gonna do a to deep that. dive did mm-hmm. you like it yeah listeners you will know that johnny has been fucking useless yeah. for 27 episodes yeah for anything related to new music yeah which is why basically 
we haven't really had one. Right. Um, other than me saying, you should listen to this. Man like Yemi's coming through to the podcast this week and yep. Johnny's fucking innate competitiveness yep. shines through. Yep. And he feels like listening to not one, not even two or three, no. six albums yeah. this Blessed Friday. Yeah. So that he didn't look like he didn't know anything about music. Yeah. Take it away, Johnny. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was genuinely intimidated by the uh, musical prowess that was about to enter the room. You've got like one, your favourite one, because we've we're hitting two hours. Okay, well I've got six, so, so it has pick, to be, pick yeah. one. It has to, to be the guy. It has to be that one. one. So, 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 Silk Sonic doesn't count as my one, but Very good. Uh, Very I thought good. I thought it was a decent album. I did think that it meanders in style a little bit too much. So everyone's heard "Leave the Door Open." Yes. Everyone's heard "Smoking Out the Window." Yes, two and then bangers. That awful skate one. Yeah, what well, two two bangers? Uh, I was actually going to say I think skate's the best track on the album. Wow, uh, I think it was the best track on the album. It's terrible. Uh, I think that this album, your taste, bruv. I've listened it, to any of it. So it kind of it goes from like I don't know. Sometimes it goes from like Bobby Womack gritty like dude singing some real shit with soul type vibes to like disco twenty four karat vibes, um, and then kind of like other general commercial pop soul vibes it doesn't really have a consistent message it's just two guys who are unbelievably talented yeah doing who some shines shit. through the most on this album or should, do i even want to know that before i listen to it i mean i'm I, probably not if i could if i was going to tell you that i could tell the difference between their voices i'd be lying see this is why oh, you wow. should this guy uh that but is, what i will say that is, is that now, it, that is egregious crazy yeah it's it's two extremely talented dudes flexing yeah and it comes across like a mixtape Oh. It's not really a cohesive album project that in the really way that I like an me. album project. That really upsets There's me. There's a lot of good songs in there. It doesn't flow like an album. Yeah. It's worth listening to, but don't expect to go on a right. cohesive journey. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you oh, very... I listened to all this music yeah, no, and I no, took no. notes. Sorry, bro. Shout out Lil Zay so, Osama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Osama. Who's this guy? Who's this? Lil, Lil Zay Z Osama, who came out with uh, Trench Baby 2. All right. Um, That's all we need to know. Yeah. Uh, Trench was, Baby yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're done. Some, We're done. We're done. We're done. Not even Kodak Black would name his album that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Shout out to the <laughs> listeners as ever. Again, uh, apologies. Not the big apology. You know what I mean? Shit happens. But like, apologies for not having an episode <laughs> last week. <laughs> we'll, kind of we'll, sorry. Like, shit. <laughs> we'll, we'll make up for it. Um, we'll make up for it. Shout out, Tommy. Shout out, my brother, P. Um, shout out everybody who is who's who's showing us love, who's supporting the thing. Continue to follow, like, subscribe, share, join the mailing list. We're across all the streaming platforms. We do this for you, um, gentlemen. This has been an absolute pleasure. Yemi, thank you very much thank for coming very down. Much. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a different podcast environment. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, great, man. And yeah, we are going to be back in a week, which feels good to say. Yes, not in two weeks. So look out for that episode episode 29 um inshallah nothing goes wrong again um peace to you all blessings stay away from all things covid peace bye Baby.